Welcome to the beautiful city of Verona for the E Serie A 2024 Grand Finals. It's a pleasure to be joined by the one and only Brandon Smith. My name is Richard Buckley and we'll be guiding you through the next two days of Italian action from Verona. You're watching the international feed for this event, so we'll be keeping you up to date with all the goals, all the games and all the proceedings as it happens. If you hear a little bit of background noise, there is a another live stream taking place right now. You can find it online. That's the official Italian stream. They might have got a few more bells and whistles and a rap battle, <laughs> but you're joining us here for the Hardcore FC action. Brandon, it's a pleasure to be back in Verona, in Italy, for another East Area. That was a bit of a mouthful of an intro, it was, wasn't it? It, it was. was. But yeah, great to be here, Rich, as we said. We, we were here last year, weren't we? We were in Lecce, a different side of Italy. Now we're in Verona. Um, and look, we're excited to be here. There is a lot on the line across these next two days. Every club that took part in this year's East Area is involved in the finals today. Today, they're playing in playoff matches. And then if they qualify for tomorrow, Richard, eight teams will be there. And what is on the line? Yeah, huge, huge implications. Not only FC Pro, World Championship qualification, E-Champions League spots as well. And the future of your season could be on the line tomorrow. But today, it's all about qualifying. We yeah. have got seven matches to guide you through. You're looking at all the, the big names are in action today. Danny Pitbull, Auburn. Hezers, you name it, they will be here competing alongside a few non-Italian names for the first ever time. Oli Bolly, Darkly, yep. they've come over from another country and they are looking to take home all the spoils of the E Serie A. When you talk about this competition in the grand scheme of things, we often talk about the domestic leagues, they're feeding into the World Championships this year. Why don't we keep up to date with people who's already qualified, who are already at the World Championships and who's going to be joining? I mean, I mean, look, this is the, this is going to be the fourth time, Richard, as well, that we've ever seen a, an East Serie A champion. I mean, there's only been two players that have won this competition before. One goes by the name of Danny Pitbull. One goes by the name of Obron, who you may have seen at different world championships in the past couple of years. We can also say that we have got the Twitch chat open we do. across the next two days. So if you are watching now, say hello. Three states all these commentators about big respect boys. I can see you in the chat. Thank you very much. That's a positive comment. <laughs> We've got a positive comment, but we can see the chat. Um, the lighting's off. Yeah, well, look, there, I can't, there's about four or five lights in front of our eyes here, right? We, we, we're trying to light this up as much as we can, but we can see the chat. But as Richie was saying, 13 of the 32 spots for the World Championships for the FC Pro uh, season have already been given out. Four of those were given out, as we said, at the end of February. Uh, I mean, I've, I've lost the card that said who it is. But off memory, I'll be able to give you most of those, Richie, on another day. I can tell uh, you. I can tell you. I think I've gone. got them. Uh, obviously, we've got the FC Pro Open finalists, uh, Anders Vergang, looking at PH Zin. Levy David's in there as well. Absolutely. You go through the domestic leagues, the E Premier League, Texan Matthias, going over, obviously, this tournament. We're going to find a couple more names. You were in the E Divise. Yeah, we saw Manny Bashaw qualify through that. Obviously, Levy and PH Zin had their spot, so Ajax won the yep. tournament. So that, that spot went to Max, who was the third player. Ajax there. We had the EMLS conclude, Jafonzo champion there, K1 John. We were in Brazil. For the we were. Guy Barrios and Nathan SR taking home those spots. And, uh, Abu Maka uh, out in Saudi Arabia. Basically, in short, 13 spots being given out. There'll be two spots given out tomorrow. Then we're straight off to Germany to go and do the virtual Bundesliga there, where there could be a few more spots. Umit might go and yeah. get his spot there. We might see, obviously, Dula might come back through or maybe some more surprises there. And then it's on to La Liga and so forth. So there's a lot more spots still to give out. But in case you've missed out what's been happening here in the East Serie A across the group stages so far, this is what's been happening. Buon pomeriggio amici appassionati della I Serie A Team 2024, regular season della competizione targata EAFC 24.
Well, there you have it. That's what's been happening so far in the E Serie A 2024 finals. What you might not be able to know, I'll give you a little behind the scenes. I'm getting a lot of noise <laughs> in my ears right now. Um, we see you in the chat as well. Get Rinkin. Uh, shout out to myself lots and of, uh, Brandon. Lots of lovely birthday messages Happy birthday. there as well. First yep. day of being 27 and I'm spending it doing exactly oh. what I love alongside you, mate, for the next, uh, next few days. The music's calmed down. Thankfully, the music has calmed down because that was... Wow. That, that was, was wild. That was vibrating the table um, as well. But as we were saying, this is the East Syria. All the clubs are here that played in the in the regular season. So even if you came bottom in the group stages, you were playing for seeding for today. I mean, this is the lowdown of what happened. AC Monza, who was represented by Hezus, you may remember him, had some great runs. To me, Champions League runs as well. AC Monza have had in past times. They topped the group. So basically, they're already in for, into tomorrow's tournament, Richard. But to shake things up, the top of Group A will play the top of Group B and whoever wins that game will choose what side of the bracket they want to go into later on tonight, which is a first, really. We've never really seen that done before. Yeah, it certainly is. So, as you said, AC Monza will take on Udinese from Group B in a placement match more than anything. It's not a qualifying match, it's a placement match. And from that, they will then decide at the end of play today where they want to be situated in the bracket. Do they want to be on the top side or the bottom side of the bracket? Let's have a look at Group B if we can as well. We can see how that did line up. It was Udinese topping at the table. Um, a familiar face if you have watched FC this year. Gabriel Antonini, who was at the FC Pro Open Finals. Juventus Desire. A lot of people are going to be looking at Danny Pitbull to potentially take a third championship. Verona and XC with Obren. There's big names everywhere you look in this tournament. There is indeed. And while we have got the Twitch chat open, who is going to be involved in that showdown SBC later on today as well? Because that will be the match between Juventus Desire and Empoli of who is going to get an upgrade. I mean, there's two players obviously on the line that could get upgraded. Let us know which one you are back in. So as we were saying, Richard, this is the bracket. This is today. Everything in pink on that left-hand side will be played out today. We will say goodbye to a total of six teams from the competition. We'll say congratulations, of course, to six that get through to tomorrow's final eight. And this Monza Esports against Udinese game well, basically decide, do you want to go at the top of the bracket or do you want to go at the bottom of the bracket? But looking right now, I mean, it could be playing Flo Cox. You could be playing Cosimo Guaneri. If you go towards the bottom of the bracket, the top half of the bracket as well, you could be looking at a difficult match there against Virgil. You could be playing against Darkley, the Portuguese player that's came over to the East Serie A this year. So it's one of them. There isn't really a favourable side, is there? The potentially could be after the other six yeah. matches have taken place. Say if Auburn gets knocked out first round, Danny Pitbull gets knocked out first round, Oli Bolly goes out, and then you start to look at where the bracket could take shape. But I think for right now, there's not really anywhere where you can look at and think, I want to be in this half or that. Well, we mentioned the showdown that is coming up on today's broadcast as well. This is that showdown, as we said. Caputo, 88, could go to a 90 rate. Or Alexandro, I'm just going to, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. For Empoli, Rich, they haven't won a game in the group. They haven't won a game in the group stages for the East Serie A. But this is, it, it could all change today. Don't get me wrong. I feel like there's going to be a lot of people hedging their bets I am, on Alexandro. I am a, always a very non-biased commentator, presenter and host. However, we are all Alexandro, are we not, for that game? I mean, I mean on the SPC. I'm not. But let us know at home who you are back in. We can see the chat in front of us as well. We saw some love for Alexandro. Uh, coming into the chat as well. So let us know your predictions as well. As we said, Danny Pitbull comes into this one as quite a strong favourite. So does Obron. But that's not always the case uh, in the FC Pro scene this year. I think we're ready to get our players out, Richard, yeah. for our first game today. Again, this is a match that isn't an elimination game. This is just a more of a seeding. You get to choose where you go in the bracket game. And why it means so much is because there is E-Champions League tickets on the line, four E-Champions League tickets and two FC Pro World Championship spots. So if you can give yourself somewhat of an easier route to getting into a top four or a top two, you're going to take it. Yeah, you absolutely are. As you can see, the two players making their way to the stage. Antonini Gabriel, before that was Hezers. Two players who we've seen on the global stage. They've been represented. Italy very proud for a number of years now. Antonini really burst onto the, the market this year and he has made a huge dent in this Italian scene, which for a long time was dominated by, I mean, all the way back when you look at sort of Principe, you, you're moving forward 
into 2019. I mean, we can't forget in 2018 that unbelievable moment qualifying for the World Championship as well for a number of players. So I think if you look at the names, Fabio Danuso um, moving forward, Danny Pitbull and Auburn really took this sitting forward for a long time. And now we're starting to see new blood coming through, which is always a real fascinating sort of matchup. Yep. The experience, the championships versus the youthful exuberance. And the one thing about Ant Anthony Gabriel as well, like he's still in school as well. I think when he was in the uh, the FC Pro Open, he was having to balance many different commitments there whilst trying to qualify, as you said, for the, the biggest tournament in the FC Pro yearly calendar and, and again look he came out of that with a lot of experience from it and I think it's clear to see he's gone and shown that form Richard in the group stages he's topped the group you can see, see in front of you there and he was very very convincing for that only lost one game which we must add as well there is a bit of context with these teams no one's gone perfect in the group stages and there's a couple of reasons for that a lot of these esports teams and football clubs actually have a drafted player that came through club tournament so there was an option for basically new blood as you've been saying Richard to come through Maybe not play all the games in the season, but to get one or two games, for example, I know Juventus decided something very similar. Danny Pitbull was already guaranteed to be second in the table. He couldn't get top spot, so he let the, the last game play out for his, uh, his teammate. Yeah, that's when Domenico Di Vico came in and uh, sort of made his debut and played in the draft format. <laughs> and that is the draft on screen that we will be looking at. Let's, let's talk about it, Richard. 15 million coin budget for those at home that don't know what we're playing alongside here. <laughs> You're allowed up to three icons that you can choose. I don't know why we're giggling. We've got some music playing in our ears, and it's just very off-putting. Three icons maximum. You are allowed to choose any icon as well as a, like a free token in your team that doesn't come off your 50 million coins. And if you've been around this scene long enough, you know that the goalkeeper requirement doesn't count towards anything as well. So that's 50 million coins to build the team you want. Let me one break the, down. I mean, one let me of the break down this team. You can see, Rich, is... Have you got the coins for a team of the year, Teo Hernandez? Or are you going to go for a different ver variant of him? Yeah. That was the quick drafts there on the screen. And now we are underway with the first game of the day. I want you to break down the draft. <laughs> it's, got, it's got in a flash. You are going to see, obviously, R9 in the squads. You're going to see a Rude Holly in the squads as well. They will be sort of the main attackers, you've got to say, in around that area. Defensively, Vidic is a unit at the back, the, the newest version of him. Right back, a lot of players using Buchanan. And then in midfield, you're just looking for players who can link it up, who can give you a bit. I think that's where you're going to see a little bit of variety in the midfield. Well, that man on the possession now, Zerks it. I mean... Before we went live today, Richard, I said, who's going to be the Haaland figure? Last weekend, I was in San Sebastian for the Liga FC Pro Cup, and it was Saul off back then, who was a, a bargain for 25k. Now we've got Xerxes, who's got pace, and a little bit more, just trying to drive forward to get it to tap moving for Udinese. A little scoop turn into our nine. And is it the breakthrough? Yes, it is for Ronaldinho. Made it look pretty simple in the end, didn't it? Slightly fortunate that the rebound fell to him, however... Antonini Gabriel does not care one bit. Ronaldinho putting a 1-0 up in this placement match. As you can just see, a simple tap-in for the Brazilian. As we said, just to reconfirm, this is just a, a seeded match. Both these two top their group, Group A and Group B in the regular season of the Serie so Maybe give you a taste of what's to come here today. Well, we're definitely going to be seeing them tomorrow, Richard, in the quarterfinals. It's just, and what time? Will we be seeing them? That will be the first game of the day or the last one. Could be an instant equaliser. Yes, it is. Ronaldinho scoring down both ends of the pitch. That one a little bit more elegant. And just like that, Hezers and AC Monza bring themselves straight back into the type. I think this year more than any, with the just different variations and different promos that we've had throughout the year of icons, of heroes, they are constantly changing what you can use in the teams in terms of personnel. 
for a long time it was you have to use these team of the year players and obviously with the restrictions that were outlined it's only Serie A players or players who have played in Serie A an icon or a hero but Ronaldinho is just the version that is available to the players if you want a splashy coin unbelievable truly especially with the amount of different sort of promo icons that are now available in the game and even sort of the recent Galazzo icon Vidic finding himself one of those as well could be a second if you today's a eh? just on the side netting nine minute halves one leg as well one leg exactly that you lose you up out of the competition not this game as we said both these two just playing for that all important qualification places there I mean let us know at home I mean are you a fan of the drafting the the drafting requirements we've seen this year in the FC Pro, it certainly has changed things a lot. It's given teams a lot more flavour. It's given players a bit more strategy. What they've had to think about in terms of their spending of coins, the play styles that have come in this year have also questioned a few of those positions. Well, I think that's why you're seeing Chalanoglu, Barella, Kandreva in these squads because it just gives you a different coin value player that you can get in a little bit cheaper to get in the big lads, like a Ronaldinho, like a Rude Hullet, an R9. But Xerxes will be used, and he will be used effectively in these squads. Speaking of which, can drive up. Yeah, we nearly put that past Chesney, but that's a great example as well. Look, you got gold Chesney in goal there, Richard, just because you believe he does the a good enough job for you and also you, you're probably out of coins by that point it's on a budget <laughs> lovely comment coming in there from G Buck 55 is that your brother <laughs> it would be something he would say but I don't know if it is you all Chance here for Udinese. Great interlink on the edge of the box, but Vidic steps in. Just cleans up any sniff of danger. Could be a ball over the top here for Hezers. Ronaldinho with the chance, lofts it over the keeper, but too much on it. And straight over the bar. 25 minutes played here, first game of the day. Here at your E Serie A. 2024 finals live from Verona in Italy we will be finding more FC Pro World Championship spots and each Champions League finalists once the weekend's action have concluded Xerxes good save from Edwin van der Sar getting right to his bottom corner to tip it out just looking to see if Chalanoglu can deliver something here for Udinese. The near post will probably be the area of attack. Vidic, aerial plus, off and up, but good defending. Only as far as Barella on the edge. Chance, good save once again from Edwin van der Sar. Been an end-to-end -end game so far, this one. Whipped into the near post. Vidic versus Vidic action as Hezers defends well. Dirksy linking up with R9. Free kick on the edge of the box and a chance for Chalonoglu maybe to hit it. He goes short. I'd like to see something off the training ground there. Theo Hernandez slipped into R9. A little bit of goalkeeper movement just to nudge him to the left-hand side to tip it out for a corner. Well, then what can we see from this area for Anthony Gabriel? Well, he took the lead in just four in-game minutes. Towards it goes. It's just about saved off the bar. 
from Edwin van der Sar. Who needed a hand or two. What I wanted to say before my, uh, my mic cut out for a few minutes is that if you're tuning in for that showdown matchup, it is on the way a little bit later on today. It's in match number three. And you'll see Juventus, Danny Pitbull, jump onto the sticks to try and potentially get an upgrade. Or will it be Empoli getting the upgrade for Caputo? Still scoop turn inside. Of course, he only runs as far as an AC Monza shirt. A chance for us to have potential quick breather as Erxi. Let's do this one around. Two banks of four there. It's so hard to break down. Does find the gaps though, doesn't he? Got to score. Got to score. And that's how you break it down, that two banks of four. You go wide, long ball pass, plus players in the middle, spread the pitch as quick as possible. Vinic has done well on these defensive corners so far as well. Also offensively, Richard, he's been uh, quite an outlet. It's a terrible touch, does recover well. There's Bissek, who has remained a prominent figure at the back on a budget. Ronaldinho around the corner. Maybe could have looked for R9 at the back post there, but didn't fancy finding the one more pass. Last four minutes here. As we said, this match is for the two group winners, Group A and Group B, from the regular season of the East Serie A. They are just playing, basically, to choose what side of the bracket they want to go into tomorrow. They're already in the final eight. They're two of the teams in the 18 bracket. Only four of them will be getting the Champions League tickets. Only two of them will be going to the FC Pro World Championships later on this year. Ronaldini, nice cutback, finds Hullet. And there again is the prominent figures of Laura Blanc on a manager Vidic. I think what we've seen in the game just in general since sort of the aerial plus attackers really took over in the attacking senses nearly all of the centre backs that have come out in promos especially icons have got aerial plus on them so in some domestic leagues where you have to use certain players it is a bit of a downfall if those centre backs aren't equipped in the Serie A he's on oh, side I'll tell you what he's just about worked that one out hasn't he Renders into Ronaldinho. I mean, Hezus can't quite believe he got away with that one, but I thought we were offside. He looked offside, didn't he? Just so I was saying about the centre backs, a bit of a howler at the back on that occasion, but a lot of them do have aerial plus. You're looking at Bizek, Vidic, Blanc, all occupying that area of the pitch for you. For that stage. It's quite a special venue here, isn't it? In Verona, which will play host to this year's East Serie A. Last year, we were in like a bit of like a theatre, weren't we? Were, we? Yeah. In Lecce. We were like in the Royal Box where we were commentating our English broadcast last year. Where would you say we are this year? Closer to the stage. A lot closer to the stage. Of course, if you're wanting to cover or catch up with the action in Italian, the native language, you can. You can find that on the East Syria channels as well. All times you can stay here with our EA Sports FC international feed. If you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, we'll be here for the next two days. Myself, Brandon Smith, Richard Buckley, and we'll have a special guest joining us in the commentary booth a little bit later today. You spoke about those long ball passes. There's one on display. Te Hernandez. Finds the feet back to R9 and poor pass, does recover well. Now Dino, you've already seen how much of a nuisance he's been. Icons that have played in this league in their past time are allowed in the 
It's got restrictions. I mean, you start going through the list. I'll see if the chat can guess a few of them as well. But Ronaldo and Ronaldinho are your first two jumping off the page. You're not even looking. Had a sniff, but Zidane in the middle of the pitch. I mean, Rude Hullet, again, another yeah. one of those players that will be in every single player's team. He's one of those three tokens that they can take in the uh, team restrictions. I, mean, I know he's not going to get a shout, but I mean, I said you've got Kaka, you've got so many icons that have played in this league. Yeah, the name value is truly, pardon the pun, iconic. You're seeing in the teams where they're having to spend big. Midfield looks a lot cheaper for a lot of these players. You've been able to use your free icon hit, though, of a player in Hullet. It just strengths it up for you. Ronaldinho can't get Paul. Oh, he could jump onto that one. I'd love to speak to both these players straight after, Rich. I mean, mainly the winning player, and find out what, what's he thinking for the rest of today. He's probably not going to go home. Fernandez tries to tink it onto the head. You already have Andrew a Hullet. you already have a predetermined idea where you want to go, what side of the bracket you want to look at. The elimination FC will start right after this game. What we've got coming up for you. Fiorentina against Salonatana. It's amazing they just put on that Italian accent. The click of the fingers. I'm very versatile. And after that one, we'll be seeing Danny Pitbull, two-time East Serie A champion. He will be in action. Trying to defend his crown. Nice to see everyone in the chat as well, helping each other out. So someone asked, what is the rules? Pearls replied, who scores the most goals will win. I mean, he's not wrong, is he? Not wrong. And right now, Monza and Hezers are winning. A little bit underwhelming as uh, Anthony Gabriel. He's been getting chances in the final third, half chances, but his conversion just seems a little bit... What's that bad post that could open up? No, I'm unable to do so. It hasn't been the same second half that we saw in the first 45 minutes from Udinese's Antonini Gabriel. What feels more interesting is that we're, uh, we're commentating an FC event on a Thursday. We are. Ronaldinho. Can Hezzers conclude the game and take the choice of the side of the bracket that he wants? There's that big long ball that's lofting again. Sort of feels like the crossing meta if there was one. It happened to see Hullet get involved. Could be a chance. Make sure inside. Lofted indeed. Van der Sar oh. jumping around and Ronaldo. The bicycle kick there. Just completely off target. Have to score. Simply has to score. It's an open goal. Just can't believe how he's missed that. Final 20 minutes still. Look, it's nine minute halves. So there's a long time left to be played in this one. He's had a couple of really big chances, though, Anthony De Gabriel, that haven't gone his way. And it's one of those games where you start missing those opportunities, it gives your opponent confidence. Massimiliano, hi guys from Italy. 
the one Danny Pitbull. He'll be in action I mean, he's got later a, today. He's got a lot of love, hasn't he? Certainly does. Danny Pitbull. This one goes back again to Hesse once again. And as soon as this one's done, it is all knockout play as we work down our bracket. There's a lofted ball. There's Rude Hullet. He's got time to get it down. And he's got a very fortunate there to get the ball back from Teja Hernandez. But it looks as if Hazy Monza will be the king of this bracket heading into tomorrow's final lane. He'll be deciding his own fortune and fate. Will Ezra's oh. He has got time now, Hullet. One for you today, No, it's not. Couldn't get a ball rolling. Or even angle any sort of finesse. Will be in again, just offside. Yeah, Hernandez looking for that Xerxes play. Uh, the, the big thing about the crossing, the crosses have to be good. You can't just put it in the box and expect that your player's going to instantly win the header. If the cross is good and you're in a good angle and you play the right type of crossing to the box. Yes, your player will win the header offensively nine times out of ten. However, Anthony Gabriel's crossing has been really poor in this game. Not, not shape on them. He's not angled them. The one that he did put a bit of shape on, Van der Sar palmed straight into R9 and he should have scored. Oh, that's a big win. No, not. It's a terrible touch from Hernandez. He actually had to sort of commit out of position. He's out of position now as I look to cover him instead. Can drive up. In a run and race. That could be a great ball to find Hernandez again. But Van der Sar, every single time from Hezzers. Shoot. Shoot. You're going to shoot, Ronaldinho? Oh. He was back now. It's too much of a difficult angle. Fake shot into our nine. Four minutes. Game on. So we're going to extra time and penalties in our first game of the day. Did well to keep his composure. I would have been shooting when it fell to me and the keeper's 25 yards out. However, took the byline, cut it back to Ronaldo Nefario and a good finish. And that's one of the, the big, big differences from a casual to a pro player there. And as you said, anyone would just naturally, you've got Ronaldinho there, you'd think he's going to have a shot from 30 plus yards and catch the keeper out. Antonini. Different ideas. Two minutes left. Barella is possessed by Vidic. He's possessed again on the opposite side. Barella not giving up on that one. Is this game swinging back to you today, Zach? Great press. Referee doesn't like it. A little bit too aggressive. And I think that will probably do us with a few seconds remaining on the clock. Done really well there. Has to get out the press. And it looks like he'll be taking... Full control of the bracket to I, Richard. He'll be deciding if he wants to be at the top of the bracket or at the bottom half of the bracket tomorrow. Last couple of in-game seconds left, but after going 1-0 down so early on, Richard, he's now to get back into this one and control it as he wanted to. That's the first full time of the day. Hezers and Monza. 
3-2 victory against Udinese Esports. In the grand scheme of things, well, we'll come back to this conversation. I'm going to say it doesn't mean all too much. However, right now, you're looking towards the next upcoming games. You're looking yep. towards knockout FC to be played. Will it mean much when we look back? Potentially so. You could start to see the bracket take shape. If there's big knockouts and there's big eliminations and big upsets, then being able to place yourself where you want makes a huge difference. That's what I'm saying. That's the only way I look at this bracket because if you're at the top half of the bracket or the bottom half of the bracket, you're getting the same sort of play. You're not going to be playing Danny Pitbull. You're not going to be playing against Obron. However, if they were to fall later today, depending on if you go top half or bottom half, it could be changing maybe the course and the direction of who you could be facing as the tournament does unfold. As we said, we've still got six more qualification games for our final eight tomorrow. We already know two teams that are guaranteed to be in our final eight. AZ Monza and Udinese are already there in the quarterfinals tomorrow. Different sides of the bracket. They might match up again in a grand final. I mean, yep. that would be uh, one hell of a story if they were to play again. But the good thing about all these games coming up today, Richard, they've never played before these teams because they were in different groups in the regular season. Seven teams in Group A, seven teams in Group B. Yeah, and I think when you look at the potential matchups and you start to do a little bit of gymnastics with if I win this, he loses there, and you start to plot your, your route through, it could be very interesting on where games take place. However, right now, when you're looking towards what's coming up, we've got some huge games right around the corner. The one that you're all looking forward to, Juventus v Empoli, that will be coming up not next. You're looking, if you want to come back to this stream in about... 35, 45 minutes time from now yeah. for that matchup. Don't, don't leave, though. You might have got a piece of it. <laughs> don't, don't leave. But Stay with us. You don't want to leave because we've got potentially one of the favourites for the entire thing right around the corner in Darkly for Salonatana, a great player, a Portuguese player that is a real, real sort of, I, I'm going to say dominance in the way that he, he approaches the game because when he gets going, I remember watching him last year at the playoff. Unbelievable. Like yep. a, a real, real, say, dark horse last year, going towards the back end of the season. But I, I, th I really do think he could fall away. Yeah. yeah, he certainly could. Look, I'm excited to see him play. He made a big choice coming over to Italy to play in their league from the, the League of Portugal previously. We're going to go for a quick break now. When we get back, it'll be time for our second game, but more importantly, our first elimination game here from the East Syria. Don't go anywhere.
Well, welcome back here again to Verona for the e Syria a grand finals. Again, this is day one of the competition. It is all going to conclude tomorrow night and we will be looking at potentially a new name as champion here. We're not hanging about and we are jumping into our second game, which is going to see Florentina in action with Virgil up against Salatana and the Portuguese player of Darkly 11. Again, it's a common theme that's happening a lot this year in the FC Pro Open and you understand why because you need to play in a league, Richard, to, to get an E-Champions League or more importantly, to get yourself to the FC Pro World Championship. So players from different nationalities are dotting themselves around different leagues. Yeah, it, I'm not surprised, really, when you look at the... so much on the line and the real potential season-defining moments in the domestic leagues. If you look at a league and you think, well, the Portuguese league, for example, isn't classed as a major league, so I, I don't know if it's worth me progressing that. Let me go on. Go to a major league. Let me go. Very similar to what Jeff Bonzo did when he moved over um, over to the EMLS. And here with the e Serie A, you're looking at Darkley, who's seen an opportunity, and he's well in his right to take it. Absolutely. You can see, obviously, his team behind him there as well. Bom Duca, a, a famous face in esports from casting to, to being involved, obviously, with a handful of players. We commentated with him, haven't we? Yeah. We hosted the show together once, we didn't did, we? Yeah. In the summer. Um, while we wait for this game to get underway, shall I give you a little fact about Verona? Not really. I'm going to anyway. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and let me know, on a scale of 1 to 10, let me know what you think of this fact in particular. It's only game two, Rich. About Verona. Um, so Verona is actually a very foggy city. Uh, <laughs> and that is because it's located <laughs> close to the world-famous Lake Garda. It's actually the largest lake in Italy. It's a very humid atmosphere here in Verona. Is it? It's quite and, cold this morning. And that is why it's uh, such foggy days. Quite mysterious, really. That's the end of the fact. Let's have a look at this draft from Virgil. You're going to see it on the screen there. He has gone with Team of the Year, Theo Hernandez, in at fullback. Very similar again. Vidic, Buchanan, Vizek, Morello, Hulik, Pandreva, and the front three of R9, Ronaldinho, and Xerxes. So. I think you're going to see a similar mould in pretty much every team. Just a different left-back, maybe a different centre midfielder and a different centre-back next to Vidic. In terms of the benches, Rich, who's going to make a difference? Raspadori, Dybala? I think Lukaku. You've got Lukaku who can come on and maybe just offer his strength and his build. I think Lukaku is a game-changer off the bench. I think probably not looking at Dybala. Raspadori actually have myself as well. Um, remember the cup where you had to use certain players under a certain rating? He slotted straight into my team and was really, really good as a sort of a, an impact sub coming off the bench. I'm probably not looking at Renato Sanchez. Potentially, even Schellia could be a difference maker off the bench, but again, he doesn't have electric pace. And when you look at the defence, for me, actually, the defence is the best part of these teams. I think all four of the back four are really, really strong in a lot of the teams. In midfield, you'd probably want a couple of different players alongside Ruth Hullet. And in attack, you're probably looking at a, it's only the 94 R9. You're looking for a team near R9 or even a different icon to fit that position. Talk about different icons. No Ronaldinho. We've got Stoikov. Thank you very much, Darkly. Yeah, Stoikov comes in to the team. We see Tamori as well, that FC versus promo that... Obviously offered you an ice or a fire version of those in-game items there. Slightly different bench as well, Spinozola, but I think the biggest one you could say is Bizek getting a get, getting subbed and, and put on the bench. And our mate Cafu as well. Falcone in goal. We're going to see lots of different goalkeeper variations. Again, let us know at home. Who would be your goalkeeper of choice? I mean, a lot of people have gone for Van der Sar. If you've got the coins and if you think that it matters that much to you of, of, a, of a goalkeeper preference, because we've already seen Falcone, we've seen a gold Chesney being used. Let us know in the chat right now, whose team do you think is better? Darkly's or Virgil's? Which team would you rather play with? You know the 50 million budget. You know the restrictions. You're only allowed um, numerous amount of icons. If it's four icons, then you get one free. You're only allowed Serie A or ex-Serie A players in the team. Whose team would you rather be playing with right now in potentially the biggest game of your season? Yeah, Virgil or Darkly. Remember, this is elimination games, so it really goes without saying, Rich. This is basically the end of the season for you. 
because this is your only route into the, the E-Champions League, and it's your only route into the FC Pro World Championships. Silly Point says Darkly's. Monster says Darkly's as well. A couple of people saying Van der Sar. I'm guessing that is for Virgil's team. And Rich has been saying we can see the chat. We're willing to wrap with all of you guys at home. Across the next two days, it's going to be a crazy four days here on the EA Sports FC channels. Again, we're in the virtual Bundesliga in two days' time. All eyes here in Italy on the E Serie A to find the best player and the best club from Italy to join the likes of Obron and Danny Pitbull on the winners list. As it looks like, we are jumping in. The winner of this one. I'm going to go, look, we're watching the game through the stand. Feels very hyped. Let's get into it. Feels very hyped. Let's get into it. You know, Virgil. Florentina. Kicking from left to right. Alatana. An early start, saved around the corner. I expect that Brazilian duo to continue linking up and causing problems across the next 48 hours. Ronaldinho and Arnai play short from here. Must be well to drop the shoulder. Ronaldinho steal back to Arnai, and it's the two of them. We didn't need anyone else in that scenario. Because they were some just built up from the corner, they played it short. If you're looking about to take a corner, have a little look at that. There was no tall player or aerial plus needed in that scenario there, Richard. It was as simple as it looked. Well, they made it look simple. Just like that, Florentina lead by a goal to nil. It's a lovely finish as well at the near post. Just open it up. Open the space. And a crunching strike from Ronaldo and Nathario into the near post area. Goalkeeper never had a chance. Well, both have had an interesting group stage throughout the course of the Serie A. You can argue that Virgil's had a better group standings. Although, saying that, played six games, one three, lost three. That's an awful deflection. Van der Sar just about gets that. But you could sort of, you could argue a little bit with the, the format here in Italy, Richard, like, even if you don't have a great group stage, you're guaranteed to get to today still. Yeah, very similar to the E Premier League, really, where the groups gave you a clearer understanding of where teams would finish. However, all the teams were eligible for the knockout. See, the difference being is you could be coming up against a really strong, informed Danny Pitbull, or maybe even Torino with Luca Negua. He's had a really strong performance in his group, getting second place. Ronaldini around the corner. Can't find a way past Laurent Blanc. What's interesting is there's actually a way you can still get five icons in your team, even though there's a three icon rule in terms of the players that you can physically purchase with your 15 million coins. You also do get a three icon that you can choose in your selection. So, of course, you're going to go for one of the most expensive, being maybe Rude Hullet. And then, as you know, a goalkeeper choice doesn't count towards that restriction. So, for a lot of these teams, I mean, the halfway to being an icon team. Yeah, they are. And I think when you look at those icon selectors, it's where you want to put the coins. Would you, for example, Cafu in at right back. Yes, he is expensive, but you feel as though that's a, a position that's necessary to have a big right back in there that can do a job you take it
one in the chat saying did Ronaldinho play for Florentina? He didn't, but he played in the Serie A. Nikon has played in this league in their pastime. You can use them across the squad. Stoichkov. There's that little dink up there play. Go. There's R9. Darkly. Come straight back into this one. And again, it came from absolutely nowhere. You see it a few times. Players get to the edge of the box. They look for the, the tiniest little bit of a dink up. And then whoever's aerial, whoever's got that little bit of. Who can give you a bit of a bustle yeah, and a hustle. A little bit of extra inches in terms of their build. They can give you a flick down. They can cause problems. You saw that with Hullet there. Whether it's Xerxes, whether it's six foot plus frame or an aerial plus build. Just like that, 20 minutes in. We are all square here. In our first elimination game. Maybe not for that much longer though. I do expect a lot of this first round to be quite tight quite cagey when there is so much on the line so much potential disruption to the season you just you can't talk any more about the importance as we will say again and again what a turn that is from Ronaldinho by the way he's going to pull away at pace pass one or two into R9 still, he's just about got this, back to it again, the three icons interchanging, it's a really simple tap and he's just, just offside. offside. The point I was making is these FC Pro World Championship spots, there's only two of them on the line. There's only 32 of them available. Yeah. They are huge. They are so crucial. The only way to get to the World Championships is through a league or even still through a league and then through the points. What people don't realise as well is that the Champions League doesn't have any link either for the FC Pro World Championships. It's his own tournament, his own trophy, and its own sort of prestigious feel. But you really want to be in that top two. In a few moments there, Rich, in the first 27 minutes where... Is he not over the top? Virgil, who might be finding himself 2-1 down here. Farline can pull away. He's got Vinic chasing him down. Ooh. That's well to recover there. As I was saying, there's just been a few moments, Richard, where Virgil's just got Ronaldinho and he's just got direct to defenders. Direct in behind or get the ball into feet and pop a skill move and then accelerate. That's a goal. Flick on. Oh. It wasn't for Barella, it would have been. Look at this space. You talked about him being direct. Slid into the feet of Kant Raver. Been a pretty end-to-end -end start in this one. A lot of predictions coming in the chat. Darkly to win 4-2. He might be finding himself 2-1 down. If he can deal with that, which he can. Izek, who came so close, dispossessed. And he's out of position as a centre back. He allows space for Ronaldinho just to find the perfect combination there. It was beautiful the dribbling and the skill move. Getting to that space. And we've already seen it a little bit today, but. Lack of conviction, maybe a, a little bit of composure as well in the final third. Once players tighten their attacking bolt, shall we say, I think there's going to be goals flying in. Again, it's the same pace of attack here coming in again. Well, run out Didier. Patient with it. 
versus Elastico. Everything's been on point with his skill move that he's tried to pull out. Question's always been is the timing of that skill move being correct? On point. Yeah. You can know all the skill moves in the book. You can have the manual learned back to front. However, executing at the right time in the right space to get the best result is the skill. Offside trap. Players coming high. Stopping the ball in behind for now. Really had any of the ball to be honest, Darkly. Saying that wins it back now for maybe the last tack of the first 45. He has been rather aggressive though when he's got the ball going forward. Three, four, five passers looking to get in behind, looking to hit space. Dirks around the corner. Think about to be a smash and grab end in his first 45 corner. Going close already from a corner. Uh, Bizek was at the front post causing problems before this time. Berksy hull it all in there to Hernandez. Probably not going to be the player to flick it on. Edge of the box. Bizek. There's Bizek again there. At post. Penalty area. Where's he adding to try and get him towards that front post? There he is. Bizek. Flick on. And the sock. Two hands on it. Half time. It is Florentina 1, Salitana 1 in our first elimination game here. This game of playoff stage. Yeah, we cat and mouse. Whenever he was moving, he was like around the box. Van der Sar was following him with the goalkeeper movement on the right stick. You're seeing words of wisdom coming in here from both sides of the stage. I mean, if you're on the side of Florentina, you're thinking... Done quite well in that half, really. You're in the right areas. You're, you're chaining skill. I don't think I've seen a single cross come in from their play style either from Virgil. Finished ninth. Uh, should I say nine points. Fourth in the group did Fiorentina in group A. I was going to say nine because they're nine. The nine teams in one group. Fontana finishing fifth. So it's a fourth or fifth matchup, and that's. Probably what we've seen so far. Quite a, an end to end game, but neither player being able to pull away in front. I think, in, in the grand scheme of things, the, the limited chances and even possession that Darkley's had, and the fact he's had two cleared off the line, and on another day, he could be two or three and up in the game. A lot of people asking about the, the showdown, the upgrades. That's our next game coming live your way from Verona, where we'll see. Juventus desire take on Empoli in that showdown upgrade matchup. Alexandro Caputo will stay with us for that one. Big win back here on Barella. Pialot finds Ronaldinho and Blanc was enough just to edge him back. A couple of yards or two. Pull it. Oh, he disguised that one so well. Yeah, that was a beautiful pass. Into the space. Really unfortunate not to get anything out of it. That reverse ball. He put on to Hernandez. Fine, on his, fine on his screen. He was trying to find that. Go the way he wanted to. Exactly during the groups of this tournament, he started with three points and he actually finished the group with three points. He wasn't able to pick up any more wins in game weeks two and three, just getting a draw for his troubles. Finishing with seven points in the table.
As you're right to say, fourth against fifth, Group A against Group B. Depending on where you finish in the group, that is who you match up in the playoffs. Good to see a sub Dybala there on the pitch. And I've, I've lost count of how many Team of the Weeks he's had as well, Dybala. He's been uh, good season, hasn't he? he's been in form, hasn't he, for Roma? Unfortunately, two in form when uh, they played against my beloved Brighton of Albion in the Europa League. <laughs> Pull it. It's possessed there. Remember, we will go, go straight to extra time and penalties if we need it. He's trying to take matters into his own hands here, Ronaldinho. Play a lot. Back to our nine. Big save from Falcone. The 85 team of the week, that is. It's a great save. It was really nice to build up play. As soon as you, again, utilise the width, get the ball into those areas where a fullback can attack and get forward. Looked like they could have been across to the back post. Did well to move the keeper, pull him out, stop that cross from coming in, and then you're just thinking, okay, what's next? Where am I going to go? Elected to play short. If you have that chance again, you probably think you score it. It was one of those. Well, I hope they'll have that chance again. Of course, there is a live bracket link as well in the chat if you are wanting to follow the action of this playoff and final eight bracket of the East Serie A. To find out who will be playing, who the winner of this one will be playing, as we said at Hezers of Monza. Well, Antony Gabriel, depending on what side of the bracket they choose to go on, their placement matchup. He scored from a corner before, did Virgil? Outswinger. Is he going to score from another one? Let's find out. Looks in towards the back post. He goes all the way across. And fortunately enough for Falcone. Get two hands on it. Great type of these games so far. It's really not being anything to separate a lot of our players. Lockdown, Ronaldo getting a great save from Van der Sar. Corner this time. Who's been manually controlling the boss this time? Is it Xerxes or Hullet or even Bizek? You can see Bizek on the defensive side for Florentino, just trying to man mark. Anyone that's being controlled, there's a like Bizek towards the front post. It's again, it's Darkly's typical move he's looking for. Pushes him all the way back. And it's not for Van der Sar. Potentially another goal. He's had two or three of those, Richard, from corners. And you have to play around what you're comfortable with. If that's set plays, getting the ball in the box from corners, utilising what is strong and meta in the game right now, you do it. Both players have had corners which have... Oh, my, what a ball if he's on. Ah, oh. travel through. That have gone close. The goalkeepers have been great so far, though. You wouldn't believe the ones an icon of Manchester, an 85 rated team of the week. Lofted ball, Hernandez. Could pull away, referee. It was a different, difficult place this for a free kick. You almost have to play short, but. Defensively, you, you're in a great position. You'd much rather have a free kick there than a corner. Well, Tan Anders had a great job of just bodying. The ongoing runner there of Arnold. and Hernandez going to get round for an overlap. No, he can't. Big switch of play. There it is. Finds Kaffir, and Anders runs off the pitch. Remember, you lose this, you're out the tournament. It's the end of your East Serie A season, and more importantly, your FC oh. season. Oh, this could be Kurds. Ronaldinho, has he gone too wide? He needs R9 to get into the box if he can. Ronaldinho is still. Travella! R9 was stood on the keeper. Did he not let him dive as much as he wanted him to? And just like that, we send every goal. It's so important in this competition. 
might be the one that will send the Portuguese player packing. And Darkly and Salatana out of the competition there. Let's just watch it back. R9 stood on the keeper. I don't think he gets there anyway. But do you know what's more for there? That r not got in the way of that. Yeah, and he would have been offside. He's matrixed out the way of it. We have to talk about it, though, and applaud it, Rich. The, the composure there from Virgil, because instantly, I think anyone that's watching this, me included, is thinking, oh, you're looking for R9 there. He did it. He just delayed and delayed and delayed and went, look, if I'm in the right position to take this shot of a Traveller, Outside the boot, thank you very much. Is that the goal that will send him through to our final eight tomorrow where he'll be one win, one game away from an E-Champions League ticket later on in May. It's a, uh, it's a tough goal to concede, you've got to think. If you're in that situation, but offensively, he marked the sp he marked the space really well, and then it's just all about the composure. What what do you have in the locker? Is it a skill move? Is it looking to extra play? Just cut inside, ball roll, and then a Travello. We've not seen a Travello for a few months. He whipped it in the bottom corner. Now the pressure all back on Darkly. You've got to come forward. You've got to attack. The space is there to exploit. Cut back. Does, does well defensively, Tio Hernandez. Captain Chaos Nunes. When are we going to hear the famous on the finesse? I mean... The finesse play style plus is... When you see a finesse shot. Yeah, it, it, is, it is there, but I haven't seen any today so far. Back to our nine. Into Lukaku. We mentioned him coming on and causing a problem. Right goal again. It makes you think that, doesn't it? Does our line get in the way? But you can't really say he does. No. If it was just too far over. into a pause when we go again. This is where changes are being made for both players. We won't show you that POV, not to give away any of the, the hidden secrets or custom tactics from these guys. Another 10 minutes, I believe, left of in-game time. And straight after this one, you'll be over the moon to know it is that showdown matchup that's taking place. Juventus Desire against a Poli Esports. 15 minutes, just under. If he's going to get a goal, does it come from a set piece? Does it come from a corner? He's been dangerous. And knocking on the door before. Keepers all day long. I think the one thing that I could look into here, Rich, I don't know if you'd agree with me or not. Oh, my, that could be terrible. Just about recovered. Man, the side of the reach he's got and how tall he is from corners, when you're trying to, you know, maybe look for the little flick onto that. The chance of success that you have compared to maybe against the Falcone, 85 rated team of the week, still tall, still a goalie, but might not have the same attribute. Yeah, attributes, the height, the really nitty-gritty stats. You could probably try a few more of those against, but I think so far what we've seen from Andesar is that you can move him a little bit and put him in the right areas. I think the big thing with corners, it's if you've got something different off the training ground, similar to what maybe a, a Zach Moore could give you, you take your time. But if not, it's the pace of the corner and the set play which will win you the header. You can take it quick and you can get the player selected to the near post and cross it before they've got time to move the keeper and get them positioned accurately then you can have serious success from it. But the longer that you take and the longer that they've got the chance to move the right stick and get the keeper in the right spot to mark anything up is where you start to see the defensive team winning more. He's also been, been so aggressive on it, on that corner. It's 
Seven minutes to try and see this one out and soak up all this pressure that's going to come his way. Could find one more potentially. Pull it. Ooh, goes for a corner again. Somehow keeps that on. Great feet. But it's not great enough. Does he go direct? Does he go slow and look for a cross, maybe? The bottom of the pitch is where it could open up. He's also got Lukaku in the box that can offer you aerial plus. An aerial starts too. Yeah, he's up. Can't find a way through. He can just take this out now. Keep the ball. Look after it. Florentina could be finding their way through to the final eight tomorrow. Maybe with a goal now, they certainly will be. Run out, Didio. Ball roll. Oh, Mizek does enough. The game's still on. It's not finished yet because... Oh, he's lost it. I think that's it. And I was about time. to say he's going to get one more chance, but with two minutes added on, you just don't know. Is he going to have the opportunity to roll the dice? I think the dice have been taken away from him. He's found oh, the he's, dice. He's got it back. He's, he's found him. He's rolling it. Is he about to roll a six or a one? That's the question. Chiesa. Can't go backwards. Come on, Gluck. Offside. And he rolled a one, unfortunately. Darkly out of the East Syria. Florentina are in. A final eight tomorrow. They will play for the chance to get each Champions League ticket to the FC Pro World Championship spot. And his commiserations to Darkly, the Portuguese player that came over to Italy to try and find his season-defining moments over here in Verona. But it hasn't been his day. There was moments at the end there, Rich. He had the chance. He had corners in the game where it was cleared off the line. He went close. Down to, uh, comes down to that. He went really, really close in that game. I think he hit the crossbar at one point as well. And the chances felt as though they were falling his way. But a beautiful counter-attack. A counter-attack that he'll be proud of. Maybe a question mark over the goal that actually did win it in the end. R9 stood in offside position, but he, uh, the referee didn't see anything wrong with it. And uh, it was a great finish in the end from Ronaldinho on the Traveller to send him through. He'll be back tomorrow for the final eight. Unfortunately for Darkley, as you said, that's it. Yep. It's cruel. Yeah, that's it for him in terms of his season. What's more important is Florentina will be in action our first game tomorrow. As we said, we don't know who they're playing against yet because it's up to... Uh, more importantly, Hazers and AZ Monza to choose if he wants to go to the top half of the bracket or the bottom half of the bracket there. But Rich, another game done and dusted. Our first knockout team out of the competition in the East Serie A. That's it for, for Salantana. They are out of the tournament. They're back to the drawing board for next year. What we can start to tease you is our next game is going to be the big one. Juventus against Empoli. You don't want to miss it. It's the showdown matchup here from the East Serie A. Who's getting the upgrades? You have to find them. You have to wait out and find out. Wait double time to speak. <laughs> we'll see you after this break. See you in a bit. Play a new see you in a bit.
Well, welcome back to the E-Serie A Finals 2024 live from the beautiful city of Verona here in Italy. We have played two matches of our scheduled seven for today and we've got plenty more action right around the corner, including the big one that you, I know you're all excited for, you've all been waiting for and you've been exploding the chat with uh, lots of questions about Alexandro and Caputo. Well, that will be coming up right around five minutes time Juventus two-time champion of Danny Pitbull will be in action however before we get there we want to show you a little bit of what you might have missed so far and uh, this is the top goals from week four of group B there'll be a poll in the chat right now in which you can vote for the best goal let us know out of the five which you think should take the top spot Ronaldo dei Ribery, Ribery danza sul pallone, che skill per Ronaldo! Marchisio dentro, Candreva, Ronaldo! Gacca! Eh. Il portiere! Le Magician! Five fantastic goals. Do you think will be the number one? And let us know. You had Danny Pitbull. You had Antonini Gabriel home as well. You've got Obren. You had Danny Pitbull. You had Antonini Gabriel Darkley and Muzzle with their five best goals of the season so far. Absolutely. I think we've got player walkouts happening. We do. Should we get to it? Should we get to it if we can now and show you? What is going on? It's the showdown matchup. Let us know now, wherever you're watching from, Alexandro Caputo. What have you done? What SBC have you done? Because there's a right to say, Richard, it's a plus two for whoever wins this game. Yeah, no draws because we will play to a win. It's either going to be Caputo or Alexandro. Juventus or Empoli. That is what will be happening. Let us know in the chat which you have done and what you want to see very shortly indeed. Let's talk about Danny Pitbull because he is Mr. E Serie A, you would yeah. say. Uh, he's won it twice this tournament. It means so much to him. But I think last year we saw his first ever victory, which was remote. And then last year he came in probably like second or third favourite and ascended all the way to the top spot. When we look at Obron, you look at Danny Pitbull. That these two are normally your odds on favourites. But I don't know, just part of me thinks that this year's not going to be as easy for him. I think definitely he's going to be up there as a. But the talent in this league, Richard. Like... Have come through. He is going to be in for. Look past group stages. For Empoli now, it's a big, a big, big ask for them for their player. I mean, look, zero points. He hasn't won a game. Zero points, six games, six losses for Ex Empoli. Sales for 98 is their representative. As we said, a lot of these teams have two or three players that could play. Next sales has been the player to take that spot for him. Oh, and then he's got the uh, the FC community behind him. Both have trying to upgrade their in-game items of Caputo or Sandro, but. He's got nothing to lose as exhales. The pressure's on, 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 on Danny Pitbull. To lose and everything he, can to knock out, he can knock out a two-time East Serie A champion here. Yeah, Danny Pitbull has got everything to lose because this is his season-defining moment. Um, you win this game, you are then two matches away from extending, whether that's with an East Champions League semi-final guaranteed or even a grand final and an FC Pro World Championship spot going to your name. We got the opportunity to spend a bit of time with him last year. In, uh, in Riyadh as well, Brandon. And I think, especially with Italy, um, their journey throughout the tournament and, and looking at him as, in, as an individual, him as an individual but there in the end. He's just a larger-than-life character. 
I think he's in a really good mindset as well. Just completely off topic here. I think he's like 10 kgs down in weight. He's been really working on himself coming into this tournament. I'll tell you one thing. He never understands anything I say every time we, uh, we speak to him. So when we did speak to him, Richard, it was more... Always smiling. Yeah, he's always smiling. He's always smiling. But a great opportunity for him, as we said, to get that Alexander upgrade for all of you at home that are watching. But more importantly for him, to be back in the final eight again. If he was to win three, three E Serie A's out of the four seasons this is run, that is it's consistency that we've, we're seeing over in the French League. Jay Vertigo 94, which showdown did the commentators do? I didn't participate. Um, Richard did. I did. Uh, I mean, guess guess which one Richard went for. What, what show in SBC he went for? I mean, you can you can probably guess where he's going. The better question is: Will this player actually get in your team, or will he just be on the bench? I'll give him some minutes. I've got a very very relaxed policy at my club. Play well in training. We get a few games. Play a couple of champs games, and they'll sub you out. No one's ever getting benched. Getting rested. John Barnes told me that quote. You never get benched, you don't get dropped, you get rested. There must be quite a long rested players list though. Alexandro was the answer. If you did, luckily, if you did Sandro and he's not getting upgraded, I blame you. But that's fine. That's okay. I just look, there's nothing against the Excels here. Like just the fact state, he's he's not won a game in the group stages. He just hasn't been at his best against the uh the rest of his group across the two match days in February and March. He's had a lot of time, I guess you could say, to, to prepare for this tournament in April. We really need to see a different and level of performance from him. I've done a bit of research as well. I, I had to look back at X sales. You know, last year, he was first place in the group. Last year. And he's last in this tournament his chance to redeem himself. It's his chance to redeem himself in the E Serie A. When you look on the other side of it, I mean, Danny Pitbull, I think, obviously, he, he was victorious. The year before, he had a good tournament, not a great tournament by his own standards, as we're just waiting to get this game underway. I think it gives me a good opportunity to tell you a little bit more about our whole city of the E Serie A in Verona. Um, did you know the famous? I, I, I don't know, Richard. I, I, don't, I don't know. No, I don't. The famous, uh, obviously, story and play of Romeo and Juliet. Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and <Eddie. laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. Uh, it was actually based here in Verona. Uh, obviously, it's a fictional story, but the families of Romeo and Juliet were real, and they were based in Verona. And you can actually visit. Uh, Juliet's Balcony, which is a very famous attraction here in Verona. You can. Certainly. And that's where I will be going right after we finish yeah, tomorrow. I, I certainly won't be. We are waiting to get this game underway. We're not too sure on the... Uh... It's going to be a Shakespearean story if X Sales wins this game. And it's going to be a Danny Pitbull tragedy. Because his season will be over. The game has not been played yet for those that are predicting in the chat about upgrades or showing an upgrades. I believe sure. we are jumping into this. Codes are being sent. Matches are getting ready. Just while we wait for this game to get ready, uh, just a very simple one or two. Uh, one being if you think Juventus desire and Danny Pitbull will win. Type 1 if you think he will win. If you think X Sales and Empoli will win this game, type the number 2. 1 for Danny Pitbull, 2 for X Sales. Let us know in the chat right now. I want a, a very quick poll uh, just by numbers and it will give us an indication of which way you think this game will be going. There you go, Vinicius. Thank you very much, my friend. Right, we're getting a lot of ones in the chat. We are underway. Here we go, then. It's the showdown matchup. Juventus against Empoli. Who's getting the upgrade? And more importantly, who is remaining in the final eight tomorrow? Lots of love for Alexandro. 
and Danny Pitbull. He will be play a kick from left to right in that white strip of Juve and from right to left will be Empoli. Pull it. Can driver! Danny Pitbull! It's only been two minutes! And he's already moving! Didn't take him long, did it, for the two-time Eastern VR champion to get things going. And, I mean, if there was any chance of a, a dream story here, Richard, I mean, it's been shattered. Yeah, dreams, unfortunately, are imaginary. They happen in your head. Danny Pitbull does one thing, and that's facts. And the facts are he's a two-time... East Area champion, you can see the trophies on his mantelpiece at home. And he's looking to make it a hat trick. Fun fact actually, he's actually got the number 33 on his back. And earlier today, I just, just pointed at the three and went, is it, is it third time? Third time for an E. Serie A Championship this year. No, you've just cursed me now. Hopefully I haven't. If he can start like he has here. What a start it will be for him. needs to get a little bit of confidence going, Exhales and Empoli Esports in this game. One of the chat just said that he saw XP on EAFC. I said, you've got a lot of games to play, mate. <laughs> He's got a lot of games to get through. I mean, one of the exciting changes that are coming up for all of us is that all my team champions He's been changed around a little bit, weekend league as we know it. It's fine in the evening now on Friday. All the exciting team of the season. And driver. To be honest, at the moment, it's all been Danny Pitbull. All Juventus. I think when you consider Danny Pitbull's season this year, he's probably a bit disappointed not to have made it to the FC Pro Open or topped his group in the East Area standings because he's got such high expectations of himself. What well, a pass. Cheeky. Just non-stop pressure, he's onside, steal back to our nine, Juve! And Danny Pitbull makes it two goals to nil. I mean, look, it's what the stats were expecting. They were expecting Danny Pitbull to come out flying. It just took his space. The step overs, a little bit of speed boost. Accelerating away from the defender and you give a player of Danny Pitbull's quality a chance like that in the final third, he's always going to score. And if you're an Alexandra owner, you're going to be over the moon right now. Unless Sales has got another idea. He tries to get his first real attack going in the game. It's defended well. A chance here, Ronaldo over the top. We don't have a chance to have a look in depth at the squads that have been selected here, but just putting a few pieces together. Christian Pulisic getting a starting position. 
alongside Reinders in the midfield. Just outside R9. Session goes back again to Danny Pitbull. Did it, Chalnoglu, Johannes, give it a year. Outside him. Oh, there could be three. Should be three. Van der Sar, it certainly would have been. Step over, exit into very nearly a finish. Locked it in. Sales. First shot will go! And it does go in! If you are a Poli fan or a Caputo owner, not completely done yet. Just gives you a little bit of confidence and it gives you a little bit of belief, and that's exactly what it will do for Sales. Just blasted it at the near post. There wasn't a lot of real technique to it. He just put his laces through it. Hit the top of the net. We are playing nine minute halves as well. So anyone who this is their first foray into FC Pro. Nine minute halves give the players a little bit longer to digest what they're seeing. From your typical foot champs match, it adds six extra minutes on top of the game. Look at the space, the it's got, it's so open. Has to score. Surely has to find a third. Wasted the chance. There's two chances now he's missed where he's been pretty much one-on-one. -on -one. R9 with the first one, Rude Hullet with the second. Danny Pitbull's finishing for as good as the first 17 minutes was. Since then he has been quite poor. Done. Is he going to put this one away? Poor old scoop turn. Dinks it in. He wants to give it back again to Juventus Desire. Can't keep giving him. Waves of pressure. Well, it R9 can drive it. It's in the air. Back to Zerxi. Van der Sar is hanging in it. He's gone to slot it near post, which I'm surprised by because it looked like the shot across the keeper into the far post, maybe even a Travella. I think it almost guarantees you a finish. Well, five minutes from half time, I'd love to see the stats. See how many chances and the XG that many people's been able to create. Something that you often associate when I've watched Danny Pitbull's game, that pass around the box, you're waiting. He sort of looks like he's not really going anywhere. And then a quick driven pass direct into the feet of the striker. And driver. Around the corner, has to play him. Be linked to where he wanted to go. Still might make it work. Oh, that croquette's up. Into a finish from Arnold.
A beautiful finish. He scored, what, three minutes into the game and he scored three minutes before the first half closes. We are critical of his shooting, critical of his finishing. But that right there is beautiful from Danny Pitbull. The left Ketter to open up the space and then the finish before the skill moves even completed. If you have got Caputo, he's still an 88. He still will have 45 minutes to be played. As it stands, and we'll see hopefully just a real snippet of it at half time. It's been one way traffic at the moment, and it's been coming the way of the two time East Serie A champion, Danny Pitbull. We must have had at least six or seven chances that game. And there's still another 45 minutes of this pressure to continue. I think for XL, we knew it was in for a difficult one, Rich, from the get-go. We're going down three minutes in. It's such a, uh, a confidence killer. really is. Yeah. XA, he'll, he'll know what he needs to do. He'll know the job in front of him. However, he's got a man in Danny Pitbull who, yes, he knows that he's playing for Alexandro. He knows there's a lot of people, thousands wanting him to win however playing for his own journey as well one step closer to his season continuing that's a mistake at the back big chance Dirksy puts it back game on if he's going to make those mistakes and you can capitalise on them. And suddenly this game becomes a lot more interesting, but he's not going to make many of them. And every time we keep saying, oh yeah, it's pretty much job done. It's probably just come back and get another one. Lots of concentration, good press, whatever you want to call it. To gift him a goal for Empoli in a dagger if you are Danny Pitbull. I don't know about you, Richard, but I'm uh, suddenly slightly trembling of what could be coming back the other way for Danny Pitbull because, as we know, every single time he's conceded one, he's just created two, three, four chances. which a play could be on if he fancies it. Every single time that ball goes forward, the fullback's just tripping that run as well, just to cause another headache in the defensive line. De Hernandez is off, he wants to use him, not really use him, more of a decoy. The loser of this is also eliminated from the competition too. Oh, what a ball. Just offside, but it's beautiful play. It really is. Big exhale from exhales there because he fought for a split second. He was in an even worse position. Taking a look at the beast out there. There's an overlap. Who's in the box around him? Dirks he selected. That's going to go all the way into Van der Sar's hands. He didn't really manage to shake off his defender, Zerxi. He was always stuck behind him, and as he did look to play a switch inside the box, exhales, couldn't 
bring the big man to the near post. I feel as if Danny Pibble just wants one more goal, just to give him that two-goal cushion again. Afu and Hernandez come. Blows, it's Hernandez that wins the better, a chance to break again on the overlap, poor pass from Zerxi. It just keeps falling back. Back to position there, right back. And he'll get round him. He's trying to. There he is. Is there a flick on? Is he on sides? A really tight call. He's on, yeah. And possession given away again. Probably going to go into a pause. Any second now, 25 in game minutes left. As it currently stands, Alexandro is on his way to getting himself a plus two upgrade on that showdown. It'll be a 90 rated fullback and most definitely a very usable defender from the Serie A and in your ultimate teams at home. You never know as well down the line with what evolutions could be coming out. Could even get a, a higher rated. Alexandro. The reason that you couldn't see the score right then is because we were in a pause. And to maintain the competitive integrity, we don't show the tactics and instructions being employed. It. Around the corner into Hernandez. Can he get around? Yes, he can. Hernandez! Another day. We're looking at a 3 3. On direct. Last time I saw one of those going in was Sunday League. <laughs> I'm still not sure how the keeper didn't catch it. You were probably shooting, weren't you? You were on the corner. You may, you may well have been. I, mean, I think you just saw it. I saw a comment in the chat there as well from uh, the Premier League. What a finalist. West Ham United to get rigged in. Talking about the draft of exiles. No Ronaldinho. No other big attacking icon selected in the team. We've seen Stoiko in squads. No Vidic at the back. SAE and Laurent Blanc is what he's gone for. And the coins have been spent because a lot of the players have gone for a worse version of Ronaldo Nathario instead of the team of the year. And he's gone for the team of the year R9, meaning that you can't get Ronaldinho in goal. Pitbull needs to go now because there's been a few moments of pressure which have really questioned him defensively. For a player that hasn't won a single game in this tournament in the group stages. Rempoli, I mean, look, as much as he's been trailing throughout this whole game, still not out of this. Stamina on a lot of his players is running low. He has been pressing, he has been throwing bodies forward. Kovac Skellia off the bench. But Laurent Blanc is in a running race with Xerxes and that's not where he wants to be. Some of the space was open for a split second there. Play short, yes he can, into our nine. 
Many people reverse Elastico try to try and squeeze through Desai and French fullback. It wasn't to be the case, and every minute goes past, and he's not considered another goal here. I mean, Sales is thinking, look, I just need one chance. One opportunity. Mark could be taking a two time East Serie A champion. For an extra time penalty shootout potentially. Pull it again, look, far hand side, there's two of them there. Works it. Steals, works it. Four minutes taken out of the game, Danny will be happy with that. So will those Alexandro owners. He could be on his way to an upgrade, if he can hold this out. Five more in-game minutes. Gone early, gone backwards. What I mean by that is, just look at the clock. When he goes to the goalkeeper, it just gets a little bit... I get a little bit panicky, a little bit worried. Because you invite the press, you invite the numbers up the pitch. He's playing a dangerous game there, Danny Pimple. As the stamina just continues to drain. He's obviously had to go for the game. Becomes an even harder task. Into a pause we go again for the last roll of the dice now where you can imagine everything's going forward. The pressure's going completely up. And so is that depth. Have a quick look at his bench, who he could be bringing on. We've already seen Kovac Skellia introduced. Raspadori. Maybe a, a, a new fullback as well. Finazzola, just as I thought about fullbacks, he's on. Give him a little bit of pace, but it could just be one step too far. Two minutes remaining. Rushes his clearance out, gives the possession back to Danny Pitbull. And the two-time champion will be on his way to the top eight. He is indeed. Alexandro gets that plus two upgrade. But more importantly, the story could still be there for Danny Pitbull to become a three-time East Serie A champion. As Juventus desire, we'll be going through to our final eight tomorrow. And Empoli are out of the competition with their player in it. A very healthy upgrade. But it's that man there, Alexandro, that will be getting a decent upgrade in the next couple of days. I mean, look, it's cagey. Very. The game started frantically. And at one point in that, Richard, I'm sitting there thinking, Danny people by half time. It could be three or four up, but with a handful of great saves. And Excel's still keeping in the game, still making the most of those mistakes that were coming his way from Danny Pitbull. Like a contested game somehow. I don't think Danny Pitbull will be pleased with what he had to do. Obviously, he kept on the back, and when there's so much on the line, when there's uh, you do whatever you need to do to get over, to get over the line. But and I think he'll be quite disappointed with how he played because he start. In spells, he was really, really good. And in spells, he looked like a potential East Serie A champion. However, there was also spells where he looked really poor. And he will have to smarten up as the competition gets further on. Absolutely, as we said. Look, that's another game done and dusted. Juventus do go through and Poli out the competition. We're off for a quick break now. When we get back, it's time for another elimination game here at the East Serie A Grand Finals live from Verona. We'll see you in a few.
Welcome back to Verona to the E Serie A Grand Finals. You may have realised that Richard's turned Italian. Uh, he hasn't. Uh, we've got an absolute legend, Matteo Ribeira, joins me fresh from the Italian broadcast. Matteo, I mean, first and foremost, how's it going on that side of the stage? I think a lot of excitement, no, Brandon? Uh, have you seen you know, also during the, the last game? Because, uh, of course, Dani was the clear favourite, but Thales uh, fought until the end. Absolutely. Well, look, you are a former pro player, content creator now, analyst, commentator, you've done it all. You've been at a lot of events live as well. I was looking through the archives. You were actually on the same team as Danny Pitbull back on 22, was it? Yeah, but uh, in the, my early stages. Early stages. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've experienced this competition. Where is this competition now to where it was a couple of years ago? No, now it's a completely different player. And I think that uh, during his first in Serie A, when uh, he won uh, with the Benevento, yep. I think uh, he made a massive step in his mentality and uh, has become a totally different player. Now it's composed when he has to attack, it's stronger in defense, so I think it's now clearly one of the best of the best. Well, let's turn our attention to our next game, Matteo. I'm going to try and pronounce this, you can give me the exact. Frosinona. Yeah, Frosinona country. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, is that good enough? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Genoa. This is an interesting one because obviously we've got Fabio Rabi on the screen right now. But the player that sits opposite for Genoa, I mean, it's Oli Bolly, Matteo. He's come all the way from Sweden to play in this league, which shows how serious he is about. I mean, I've got to ask you the first question. How do you feel and how do other Italian players feel when there's players from outside of Italy coming into this league? Does it does it annoy people or is it more of like, OK, this competition's getting stronger? No, I think it's more challenging. And uh, of course, uh, Oli, it's the only one remaining because uh, uh, we have seen that uh, Darkly has been eliminated by, by Virgil before. And, uh, you know, Oli uh, as well is one of the most known faces in, in our esports scene. And uh, representing Genoa, uh, it's for sure an honor for him because uh, one of the players that Genoa had in the past was Montax, yeah. another top player, another Italian top player that now is playing uh, in La Liga. No, we have the teams. Well, this is the teams then coming in. This is Oli Bolli's draft as well. We've also got the Twitch open as well, Robert. There's a lot of love coming in from you uh, today. We'll be doing our best to interact with everyone. I mean, if you were building this draft, Ribeiro, with 15 million coins, give me three players that are a must. A must. Maybe a defender, a midfielder, an attacker. I could already guess the midfielder is probably going to be Rude Huller. Yeah. But uh, in our in our draft, we have a free one. So Gullit, uh, I think, will be there always. For me, in my honest opinion, in the attack, R9 has to be there. Uh, in midfield, I I would have to choose Zico, the future the, yeah. the, the the future star version, yes, because I like him very much. And in defense, Teo Toti, because uh, he's uh, very strong in defense, but he's so fast so also with the fullbacks, he's very good. And can you tell the difference between a, a Centurion's Ter Hernandez and that team of the year? Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a few. There's a couple of players that maybe didn't have the coins mm -hmm. for the team of the year. They've used the Centurions, but. You can feel a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's more complete as a player, the, the 31, because the, the Centurion is stronger in defense, but the struggle a little bit when he has to attack. And I mean, the bigger question I've got for you and Sarah as well, obviously we, we're so used to seeing the crossing meta in FC24 at the moment and a lot of FC Pro open events. Who is the, the so-called Haaland or the Soloff? Is it Xerxes? Is it Hullet? Xerxes, 100%, because also during the regular season, has always been the, the key player in the, in the attack. Uh, have, you, have you seen also before how dark they scored? Uh, a simple cross to a lob to the to Zirze and added to the, to the striker and then an open goal. This could be our first chance of the game. Coming in from Oli Bolli, it must be said as well, which is even more exciting about this game, is that the winner of this place, Danny Pitbull, tomorrow for a spot in the E Champions League. How important. It's a, it's a crazy potential matchup we could be looking at here, obviously. Rightfully so, whether it's Fabio or whether it's Oli Bolli that plays against him. Against Danny Pitbull, two-time East Serie A champion. Winner of that, goes to the E-Champions League. And more importantly, the book a spot in the final four of this year's tournament. Here's R9 juggling the ball around the box for Fabio Rabi, who does just about get pulled offside in the end. I mean, Bizek's been quite a familiar face. I think he played in a couple of the group stages for a lot of players where there was lesser budgets, because correct if I'm wrong, so in the group stages of the East Serie A, they, there, was, there was weeks where teams had to be built with 7 million coins, yeah. 5 million coins and, and 10 million. Yeah, yeah, but this uh, it's, uh, it's amazing because it's very cheap, but it's very effective because he has a, a big body type, the aerial plus that helps 
to defend the the meta situation. So it's a, it's a crucial one. In and it feels like that's a big key part, isn't it? Your centre back has to have that aerial plus yeah. play style because otherwise they're just not going to be able to compete. Oh, for sure. Have you seen also Blanc, for example, because he has also the anticipate but the aerial. The aerial is always there. You could argue it's probably the most important play style plus this year, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure, because uh, the meta evolved like always during the year, and now the, the aerial is uh, it's crucial. We have seen also. At the biggest stage here in the EU Premier League, for example, the, the Alan Noy. Yeah. It was un incredible. We're into a pause. We are early doors here on the side of Abu Rabi. Might be just making an, an all important change. Jolly Bolly. As we said, made a huge decision to come out from Sweden to play in Italy. I spoke to him earlier today and he said this for me is the most difficult league there is in the FC Pro ecosystem. And look, he's got to try to do what he can to battle to get those top two spots for the World Championships. Yeah, I think our league, but also the ED Gun, it's, uh, are very tough as, uh, as it's at the moment. It says a lot about the French league, doesn't it? Because Montaxa. Catch as well. And Catch, the two Italians, even Karim, Karim have yeah. gone yeah. over from this league over to the French side of things, which will be playing out in the next couple of weeks. Here's Teo Hernandez, Ronaldinho interchanging well. Was he on side still? Yes, he is Teo Hernandez. Trying his best, Ronaldinho. Eventually wins the ball back. I mean, as someone who's been in the space for a long time, I say, how have you found the difference of going into nine minute games this year? Nine minute halves, because it's a lot more time. There's no second leg to fall back on that maybe players were used to. and. There's no real double elimination brackets either. It's just, you know, losing your out. Yeah, I think that at this level, players uh, at a major team, because they have to reset the mentality, the choices in the in their formation during the same game. And I think it's completely different uh, between uh, the past. And lots of players didn't adapt. Some players were just made to be two-legged players. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Also, speaking with uh, with the guys at the, the beginning of the competition, there were a lot of players that told us we preferred the, the old format. I mean, one thing it's definitely done is it's made it a lot more simple for you at home to understand the, the formats and the harsh reality of knockout FC. You lose, you're out of the tournament, and for a lot of these players, it would be the end of their season. 20 minutes played here. Even player have really been able to create proper chances. And yeah, Tehernande showcasing his ability and his team of the year build. Massive switch of play. Well, so hard to pull away from Hernandez again. Cuts it back, went on his own for a shot. Maybe not the, the best of decisions there, but... Not the best spot as well. I mean, I've got a corner to come in, which... I think will be worked into the box other than lofted into the box because there isn't really anyone in there offering you too much. Can Draver? Porter comes in again. I mean, there isn't really anyone you can directly get it into the box, can you? You've got to try and work it in. Maldinho, Hullet. Poor Porter. The frozy Nonna are able to keep possession. A little bit longer, Hull it back to our nine. Only Polly one nil down. Fabio Rabi. You and can't argue it's not been coming because it has. And this is Fabio Rabi. Always play like this, like this, because calm, composed, straight passes. In fact, I think Fabio is the only player that has no deal to play even on the bench because he plays tiki taka, clearly tiki taka, like Pep Guardiola. And this is his typical type of act. So with his play style, he's, he's just not a crosser. No, zero. He wants to play nice football. Yeah, like the, the past keeper, you know. And at the moment, he is able to do that. 25 minutes in, Oli Bolly. Not really been able to get going. Remember, the winner of this will play Juventus tomorrow in the final eight of the East Serie A. In a quarter-final match. So much on it, lofted in deep. Big chance, Oli Bolly. Xerxes, a bit too far wide, and 
it's easy pickings in the end. Yeah, I think they they have a similar play style because also Oli didn't like to adapt every year to the, the meta. He likes to play clean, you know? You know? And I think you have seen several times uh, Oli at the, the, the biggest stage. But it's very strange because in 30 minutes we have seen nothing coming, the, coming from inside. Do you think as a player, if you want to try and play, you know, beautiful football all the time, maybe without falling into the meta or the or trying to maximise maybe the play styles or a certain skill move or something in the game, a finishing type. Does it eventually come back and against you, though? Yeah, for sure. I think that it's not up to them because... Hello. Yeah. Maybe penalty. a penalty. Yeah. And it might even be a red card. Yeah. Gets away with it as Bizek. Lucky one. Bizek. And Oli Bolly will not get a better chance than this to make it 1-1. One -one. Up steps Arlo from the spot. Ooh. Saved! And what could have been a gift of a goal is a huge save and it's still one goal to nil. It's a massive save from uh, Fabio, but he was sure of his decision because he moved so early with the keeper. Big chance again! He might have saved the penalty, but he's not saving that one. Ronaldinho will bring Oli Bolly straight back into this one. He came from just being dispossessed. And it means a lot for uh, for all of this goal because Fabio was really gassed because from his save, but this goal, it's now all levels and he has to regain the lead. There's a tiny little bit of goalkeeper movement there, which yeah, for sure, as well. Allowed Oli Bolly to get that shot in. Back to the drawing board at 1 1 again. A lot of people in the chat asking, is O'Brien and actually will be a little bit later on today? Playing in match number six against Bologna and Lone Wharf. An historical one for us. It is? Yeah. He's a. Uh, he's. Lone Wolf's got to be one of the more older players in this competition, but more importantly, one of the most repped and capped players. Yes. Oh, big chance. The first has to come on. Nine. How about that one? Flip it, save it. That might be goals of the day. What a goal. This is Fabio Rabi special with the reverse elastico. He loves it so much a reverse elastico in that one versus one situation. We'll see you again on the replay. It just gives you an inch, doesn't it? A little bit of room. And you've got a player like R9 that can go on his left or his right foot. You just the player with house money in the box. Back in front, Fabio Rabbit. Bollock. What a penalty, missed that penalty, replied seconds after with a finish from RNI. Might be able to get another one with it. The Brazilian. Uh... Almost another penalty. Almost. Do you think that's an angle where Fabio's got to be a bit more careful? Not diving into tackles? Yeah. Because, you know, a referee always loves to, to blow the whistle in that type of situation. Question: you've got Oli Bolly with R9 causing all sorts of problems. Heads it down on a half volley. Still back to Ronaldinho, who will try and move it onto his left boot. Last two minutes before half time. Can he turn? Hull it. Yes, he can. Last 25 in game seconds, that should do us for the halfway point. It will, and I mean, look, Tao, it's been a decent first 45 minutes yeah. in this one, hasn't it? Maybe the, the first 30 minutes, very, very close, with Oli studying his, uh, his opponent, but then the, the things change when uh, he, he scored after the, the penalty. But I think it's a very close game. Also in the in the second half, I expect to see lots of action. It's 
not uh, it's not over yet. Would you say you've been impressed with Fabio Rabi's performance in the season this year? I mean, he's joined second in Group A. He's had better finishes than Virgil, better finishes than uh, Flocox, Lone Wolf, and so forth. Like he's had a, a very solid group stage. Yeah, and uh, you have to think that Fabio has a, a strange story because uh, this year he quit the competition because uh, he, he had no no team. How, no. Did, how did he come back then? He, he came back because the, the frozen on a guy had, uh, had, to, had to quit because he uh, had, uh, had a problem. Uh, and so he, he was called to represent Frosinone. And now he's working and dealing an easy sport job with his other job. So the, the, the effort he's putting into this is incredible. Basically, he's working a full-time job. Yeah. Whilst trying to balance this as well, uh, it's uh, it's incredible how he's uh, dealing with the two sides of things because to compete at this level, you have a lot of also into this. A lot of the six games you play in the group stages, one four of them drew one and lost one. And look, he might be quitting that full time job if he mm. makes it into an FC Pro World Championships and an E Champions League, which could. Very much happen. This is Richard Play. The running race between the two fullbacks. Oh, what's the ball? He's on side as well. Hull it for three. And no! Chance wasted. Uh, yeah, because Oli was good with the keeper movement, but maybe Fabio took the shot too early. Had a lot of pace, uh, space. Attack. Could have been a really tricky scenario for Oli Bolly to try and navigate his way out from Vatican Drive of Vinic. Well, that's been brilliant. It seems like the first half. Now it's all Fabio uh, attacking and only defend. I mean, when you're in these moments and you're against it, and you feel like you can't breathe in the game. How do you get back on control? You, uh, you have to make a lot like this, like a lot of different sides to move the, the defense, no? Because we know that uh, the defense react to where is the ball. So, Oli, I think it's going too much in, into the, the, the pitch inside to, for, the, for the center. Do so you think just big, use that long yeah. ball pass, open up the pitch, switch yeah. it? Yeah, with the, with the fullbacks as well. He has to use more of them more. He's possessed, fortunate enough that Wizek is there. Could be a running race here for Ardo. Can he get round Pizek? Yes, he can. The future stars. Big chance for Oli Bolli. He brings someone else into this attack. They, they just run away from him. Step over still. Times it green. And that's a fullback scoring. Roberto Carlos. We called it. Or we jinxed it. <laughs> Oli Bolli. How on earth? Ah, no, it was R9. Oh, I, I thought it was a better For a second there, it's but, like, but, but, you, you, you yeah. questioned me. I thought if yeah, but, Roberto Carlos on the pitch there, but, I was I was worried, but it was on from the it was from the wing right. it from was the wing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but even still, what a finish! Yeah, amazing goal. He just used those runners as a decoy. Didn't need them. Didn't use them. And it's that time green of a finish, which yeah. again in moments like that, trying to time a shot perfectly, it's not easy. Ice in his veins. The ice man. It is. Is he the Italian ice man? Well, technically Swedish, but <laughs> the storyline still is there. Two two. Fabio Rabi, it's back to you, my friend. What have you Ooh. got? Another one! You can't stop this man today. Every time he concedes, he finds a way back through. It was a nice one as well, with the driven pass onto the other side of the, of the area. Look, calm and composed.
Three, two again. Back to Yorley Bollock. Keep your season alive and your chances of having a very successful first ever campaign in East Syria. Look at the run. Look at Hullet. So much space. Oh, that also could be a decent option. He's just done a good job of spreading the back line here. Rabi Rabi. Trying to get down into that byline area where. A little bit impatient. Causing all sorts of problems. Lolly Bolly comes through again on this right hand side where Ter Hernandez has just got no stamina at all. He's out of all energy. Lolly Bolly just battling with the ball. Still falls back to his feet. Back to Hullick. Goes for a corner. Look like the previous one. R9 with the same skill, the step over. Corner, front post, flick on! Oli Bolly! You can't concede too much space to Zirce on a corner kick. You can't. It's the first time I've actually seen Zirce do something, I'll be yeah. honest. Yeah. He hasn't really done too much in terms of scoring goals or scoring goals from aerial positions. And it's very strange because during the regular season, he was the main guy. Scoring from everywhere corners, uh, uh, left foot, uh, right foot. Holly Bolly says, Checkmate. It's 3 3 again. Flick on, done nicely. Mark Canan has been a important figure on that far hand side. We've got the coins, we want to spend them out on Cafu. He is the man for the job. Pull it. Makes the sting out of the shot. And the saw, I mean, I'm not sure what's happened there. You've given away a corner. Holly Bully just scored from one a couple of minutes ago. See what's coming back, lofted deep into our nine, headed back across Vinic. That was a good idea then. And his hands full. A few moments there, Oli Bollock. Playing a very dangerous game. Yeah, I think he has to do something more because time is running up, 15 minutes left, maybe put some pressure no, on your opponent. We might be going into our first extra time here with East Syria. Such a high line he's playing, though, which we've seen a few times. Only probably has been able to capitalise on it. Is it the box? This is queuing up. See the little player switch now at the back line, just getting players in position like Vidic, moving them across an extra couple of yards. It stops that through ball, it stops that threat. Look how, how wide his uh, defensive line is right now. Now, quickly, the pressure's coming at him. Oh, it's a harsh foul potentially into the pause. We go again. I mean, me and Richard were speaking about this from a few of the drafts we saw earlier. Who are the substitutions that are going to come on and make a real difference? Because you spent most of your coins on your yeah. starting 11. You, you're talking, what, like 30, 40, 50k players on the bench? Not really big. Yeah, basically, in fact, we, we usually don't do crucial substitution. Maybe it's more like a, a stamina factor. So you you try to put into the pitch uh, fast, faster players. So I, sometimes we have Quadrado or, for example, uh, the winter card of the Bala because he also has a developed trait that maybe is not effective as the past, but it's uh, still an option to use in a, in a tight game because Fabio is defending very yeah. good. Well then, nine minutes to determine if you're in tomorrow's final lap. Up against Danny Pitbull in our second match of the day it will be.
Speaking of substitution, there's one on the screen now. Lukaku. Oh. Can he pull away? It's Oli Bolly. Is he going to go on his own, Lukaku? Yes, he does. Oh, Oli Bolly. Another perfectly timed green from Oli Bolly. It's one of those, though. If you're on the opposite side of it, Matei, you're thinking, he's not going to shoot Lukaku, is he? Yeah, Lukaku usually you put it into the pitch because it's good, very good with the aerial plus as well. But he has a strong body type when uh, he speed boost with the step overs. It's like unstoppable and uh, we have just seen it. Well, well, well. Oli Bolly, you could honestly argue, may not have even had the better of the stats in this game. He hasn't had certainly the, the more chances, but he has been clinical when he's needed to be. Clinical as well, yeah. And if he scored that penalty, it could be a very different game. Yeah, but I think that not just from this game, but also during the regular season, we never see the real Oli Bolly. I think that he's... I think he's in like sort of stuck in gear yeah, four. He's not yeah. really giving you his full performance. Yeah, I don't know why. I, maybe uh, FC24 it, it doesn't fit perfectly his uh, his play style. But uh, if I think to, to the prime volleyball, it's a it's a player that uh, uh, constantly attack you, that defends like his defense is like um, unpredictable because. It's very tight. The opponent uh, struggle a lot to, to break it. Well, he only won two games from six in the group stages, which mm -hmm. just goes to back up your point, Mateo. Yeah. How he's not been at the races. Oh, that didn't fall nicely, did it, to Gonzalez? So close. That should have been a tapping, and we could be looking at a 4-4. But there's things that maybe Fabio Rabi doesn't have, like from Oli Bolly's point of view, just seeing out a game like this. He's been to so many tournaments in his career all around the world. Maybe one or two uh, attack. But is he going to be able to contain Fabio Rabi with these last few attacks of the ball? Or are we on our way? The 30 more in game and minutes. Man. Oh. Venezuela just about won that. Gives away a corner. You fancy a shot from the edge of the box. Bizek into Rabiot, who could have maybe added to the space on the on the right, on the right. And it goes to show. Look, Fabio Rabi's had the better season, but it's knockout FC. One game to keep your tournament, to keep your season alive. Oh. And only Bolly, I said, forget the fact that I've lost four games in the group stages and I've only won two. I'm a different beast in knockouts. And he's still somehow got the ball in. Any time of two minutes, 13 game seconds left. It looks like we've got Oli Bolly against Danny Pitbull. Juventus Desire against Genoa in a quarter-final tomorrow. And it is confirmed now. You can honestly argue against the run of the play and the stats that we've seen. What a comeback. And also he had the, the, the chance to, to, to join the attack for the last time. But his, uh, his composure made the right decision, so he, he passed the ball back and the game is over. Well done to, to Oli, but commiseration to Fabio because he had a, a very strong game. He came sixth in Group B, Oli Bolly. I know this is Oli Bolly, and you said that you said the right words. He just hasn't been able to get on with this game as much, but February, March, April, there's been time it's to really just play and play and play yeah. and play and get better and get used to the game and get used to the feel of the, the players you have and in the budget you have. But that's Oli Bolly. Oli Bolly, the champion. An experienced champion. player. Champions never die. Exactly. Never. You got it from this man. Anyway, he is through. What a game that is, by the way. Danny you Pitbull against Oli Bolly. Like, Tomorrow. It's like a final. And it's for the for the first Champions League spot. Yeah. So Top four. How important it is. Top four in a Champions League spot as well. I think we might have an interview to, uh, to go to and listen to. Matteo, I believe you're going to be doing a good job of... Uh, Translating that yeah. for us, which uh, is, is great, very, very great of you. As we said, we've still got three more games coming up uh, later on today. We're going to be seeing Obron in action, which should be good. Looking forward to seeing him. Flo Cox too, uh, also. But for a lot of these players now, who are out the tournament, end of the season. Yeah, It's harsh, but that's, but that's just the lay of the land. Yeah, we, we know how the, the competitive season is made, but we have two more tournaments, you know, in Dallas and yeah. uh, Yonko Ping. So... 
maybe last chance for them there but for sure the official uh fc24 for competitive circuit for them do you think coming into this tournament this year to put you on the spot is there a is there a favorite or is it just a lot of good players at the moment that not, depending on their day could go and win this thing because look ollie bollies he's just went to say he weren't great in the groups comes out it's knockout fc squeezes the result he goes through danny pitbull dominated the game but only won three two yeah i think that when we have uh, an elimination game it's uh, not always but most of the time a coin flip because we have we are witnessing the best level possible uh, at the uh, at stage of the competition well, Matteo, i'm going to pass it over to you to try and Translate this interview for us right now. No, but uh, I think we have oh, Oli. Oh, it's Oli Bolly. We don't even need to translate it's, it's, it's this. It's easy for you then. Can you, can you translate Swedish? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sub out for Richard Buckley, but yeah. he's going to be joining you for our next game. But let's listen to this interview from Oli Bolly. First of all, congrats. And um, which is uh, your uh, the most important player in your team? I think it's uh, a boring answer, but I have to say Xerxes. Uh, he's uh, so good at okay. he's so good at crossing, and he wins every header and uh, really good at corners as well. Zirze, con Zirze, sabi ti passo la palla di testa. Eh, io la prendo, lo stop di petto e provo a andare su questo linguaggio anglofono. And uh, Oli Boli, uh, you are the only foreign player in this league uh, in the Serie A team uh, 2024. Uh, uh, we, which is your focus? Uh, now the next step uh, is the final eight, uh, and uh, you have going to win. Yeah, of course, my goal is to win, but I, I know that every game here is really tough. And tomorrow I will play against uh, Danny Pitbull. Uh, he's a very good opponent, so it will be, it will be a 50-50 game. Faccio una domanda anch'io, ci proviamo. Oli, how this uh, victory can change your mind in this competition? I think winning on stage is always giving you confidence. Uh, so I feel even more confident now after this win uh, and going into tomorrow. E quindi so io non ho domande ma solo complimenti per Oli Boli, quindi congrats Oli Boli. Pensa di parlare a nome di tutti. Assolutamente sì. Congratulations on Oli Boli, davvero una partita davvero impressionante, no, da parte del eh, pro player svedese. In general, ragazzi, perché non c'è yes, mai. Yes, uh, Brandon Smith has been subbed out. Mm. I am in the booth and. Uh, the super sub. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to say, I don't really think this. I never thought this would be an opportunity. Like Lukaku me for Oli. <laughs> me, me and you together in the commentary booth. I just want to continue talking about Oli Ball before we get into the next set of games. Brandon were talking about the group form and how poor he had been in the groups, but there are certain players that I would never back against in knockout play. Yeah, for sure. And Oli Ball is one of it's those one players. It's one of them, yeah. He, he could get zero points in the groups, and I would still think he's got a chance. He's got a chance of winning. Another one of those players is Obren, and uh, he has won something already. Earlier on, we did a poll for everyone at home to let us know what you think the best goal of week Ronaldo was. Dentro. Berry, Berry. And it was Obren victorious. Uh, this was the goal against Sassuolo. What a player he is, though, Obren. Talk to me about what he does for Italian FC as well. Yeah, he's uh, as well my housemate. So yep. we, we live together. But uh, yeah, uh, he always likes to score a goal like that because he's his second best goal uh, award for, from this uh, season. And uh, I think that uh, Auburn, uh, what he did in the, in the past three years, uh, already put him uh, into the best of the best uh, uh, sites no, in yep. Italy because we had Principe. Uh, uh, for sure, but Principe never did uh, in global. Yeah, I, I, he had the, the top four in his first uh, World Cup, but Auburn made the back to back top four in two World Cups. So yeah. uh, I think that at the moment, Auburn is the best Italian player in the, in the team that we ever had. Well, we're going to be seeing potentially him lift another ECR. It could be Danny Pitbull picking up his third, yeah. or it could be a Swede. Those two will be going head to head against each other tomorrow but the action doesn't stop here on the EHRR 2024 finals because up next we have got Torino versus Sassuolo a, a really good game when you look at these two players um obviously Storari and Luco I think it's two names that have got the potential to to go on and win it but they're not in the sort of top three or top four um 
what are you expecting coming in from this game as they make their way to the stage? Talk to me about Torino. Yeah, Torino, I, I think that you may know Lucone from uh, last uh, E-Club World Cup because he was playing for Napoli Esports yeah. and they had an incredible tournament uh, with uh, Daniel top Hulk. Four. Yeah, yeah, top four. Uh, losing, I think, to, the, to, to Anders Lumut, so uh, to, to best of the best. And uh, also in, uh, in his first uh, E-Serie A campaign, Lucone is doing uh, really good and uh, he is very, very good in playing the corner kick. Yes. Everyone is scared from, for this, uh, this this situation during the, the, the game because he usually scores at least one corner kick every every game. Storari from the other side didn't have the, the best regular season, but uh, it's strange because I I usually watch him training also with Dani, with Obrun, and online is very good. But here in the in the offline uh, competition, at the moment, it didn't set up very well. So we have to see uh, if now in a knockout game, in an elimination situation, he could make this massive change, this massive step up. Well, you talk about the him not playing very well. There's stats to back that up. In the regular season, he played six games and only got one point. One point he didn't yeah. win a game. One draw and five losses. That's Luca's team. On the screen, for anyone interested at home, what he's going to be using. Pretty standard uh, for what we can see for a lot of these squads. The bench looks quite cheap when you look at the bench and, and the 50 million coin budget that you're offered. It's the just base version of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, future star alongside Rude Hullet in the midfield and attack. And then you look at the rest of the team. What you would expect, really, nothing too surprising when it comes down to the selection for Luca. Yeah, I think uh, that all the teams are basically pretty much standard. The, the massive change, uh, I think we we already seen it because uh, Fabio, as I said before, it was the only one not playing Zifte even on the bench. But uh, I already sneaked to the other teams also on the on the side and look, are basically the the same. Also, Sorari is I think. The, Basically the same, uh, the same players also also on the bench because they they fit the best. Yeah, it's the best coin value players mm -hmm. in the budget that you are given. Um, interesting, you've seen a slight different variation on the formation there to get Kandreva in the team as well alongside Cholanoglu and Rude Hullet in the midfield. We talked about Storari's group performance. As for Torino. And Luco, they were pretty good, to be honest. Um, two young players, Luco and Samu Gamer, both playing for that Torino side. They finished second in the group behind Monza. 13 points, four wins, one draw and one defeat. How big of a favourite are Torino in this game? When you look at the head-to-head, -head, you look at the groups, you look at second place versus bottom. Would this be the biggest shock of the day if Luco was to lose? Yeah, I think I think yes, but uh, we have also to keep an eye open on the next game because Auburn versus Lone Wolf. Wolf. It's another like um, match between uh, a top seed and uh, and a lower seed. But uh, for sure, Lucone made uh, a massive performance during the regular season, and they had a perfect chemistry because y when you have two two stronger player players like uh, Luco and uh, and Samu. Uh, maybe you are in difficult because you you don't know uh, how who's the right players for the right game because uh, in this format for the final uh, and also for the playoff you have to choose only one player and uh, Samu accepted the the choice and uh, he said uh, Luco I am with you I'm 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 back uh, behind you and uh, I can give you good advice in fact they they bring two players behind. And uh, I think that Torino has one of the, the best chemistry into the tournament. And I think it's a key factor because, oh, for sure, the, the player that wins the whole thing, it's one. But uh, at the end, it's the team yes. that uh, helps you in, uh, in achieving this one. And it will be, when you look at the history books, the team that is victorious. If Torino and uh, Luca was to go on and be victorious, it will be the... Really nice colours, to be honest. I quite like the burgundy. The burgundy maroon of Torino that is victorious here in Verona. Fist bumps.
for the players and coaches behind. I think we are all set. I think we are ready to go for our fifth game of the day. Myself, Richard Buckley and Matteo in the commentary booth for this one. We've just seen an unbelievable matchup, it's got to be said. Oli Bully victorious in the end. Four goals to three, the highest scoring game we've had so far. Will the fireworks continue in Verona? We're about to find out. Torino from left to right in that burgundy strip. And from right to left in the green and black of Sassuolo will be Storari. One leg, nine minute halves is the format if you are just joining us on this fine Thursday evening. You can see the live chat as well. So if you've got any questions for us in the commentary position, fire them away. And also let us know who you think is going to be winning this game. The stats would lean heavily towards Torino. However, we've seen some crazy things happen in yeah, the past. Uh, you, you have said it before. Numbers are just numbers, and yeah. when uh, you are in a knockout game, uh, everything could happen. And uh, I think that we have never seen the the real Storari, so I I expect to be some surprises. An ugly with a lovely ball out wide to bring Tio Hernandez into play. Ronaldinho sliding R9 in, and a big save from Van der Sar. That could have been, and maybe should have been, Storari one 0 up. Massive keeper movement here from uh, Lucone closing the gap. Down the other end, Rude Hullicks. One on one with the keeper. No keeper movement can save him on this occasion. Killer Woo. instinct here from uh, Lucone. From a save, he's scoring the, the leading goal. Look at that. And this is good. Oof. This is why you, you spend your free icon spot for him. The play styles. Simply too strong. Power shot, finesse shot for Rude Hullet. He can shoot anywhere across the goalkeeper. And that one was emphatic right across him. Storari maybe thinking I should have been 1 0 up. Now <laughs> he finds himself 1 0 down. And it happened to Storari so many times during the regular season. He always uh, go to so close, but then. <laughs> In the in the other in the other side that the opponent scores. And what what would you say the reason for that is? Confidence, composure. Is it? I I think both of them because if you keep the composure, maybe in that uh, in that situation you can score. But as well, if uh, things are always wrong with you, you you can uh, build your own confidence. No? You just look at the top side of the pitch there. Tio Hernandez with a lot of space. He can be a catalyst for attacks. Into Zerks here. Ronaldinho, R9 on the finish. Good save from Van der Sar on that occasion to tip it wide. Let's see what an aerial presence can do in the box here. Vizek. First, first corner kick. Let's see. Vizek selected. I'm, I don't like... He's not brought the keeper that far out. Yeah. To me, this opens up the near post. Yeah, for sure. What did I say? We called it or we you jinxed it once again. You have to be more aggressive yeah. with the goalkeeper. Yeah, because you have to bring him closer to the corner kick. He, he stayed to the, into the middle, opening the, the, fir, the, the, the first post. And I think the problem is the goalkeeper can do great things. He can almost like jump through players to get yeah. the ball. But if there's too many bodies in between the goalkeeper and where the ball's yeah. going to land, he will never, ever get to it. Yeah, the defender stops the keeper in the, in the situation and it was too easy here for, for Lugon and we are all ready to nil. The Swallow just getting in behind here. Storari trying to work something in the box. Good second man press. Activated, Xerxes with the strike, but Vizek in the way alongside Nemanja Vidic. Was it a power shot? Yeah. I think it was. He just sort of snapped the shot away. What a pass that is. Andreva, one on with the keeper. Van der Sar comes a long way. 3-0, and you could say game over already. 
it's very it's very strange to commentate on it because you know when uh, you play a knockout game during nine minutes per half, you can't act like that because already Trinil uh, it will be like a mountain to climb here for uh, Storari. It's also mountains flying into Verona. I didn't know we were that close <laughs> through the mountains. Beautiful yeah, skyline. We are not that far. That's Ooh. a penalty. Yeah, that is. Could be a lifeline. You said it's nine minute halves. So there's a lot of time. Rude Hull it over the spot kick. He gets the swallow back in the game. Maybe it's just not Storari's day. No, I, I think it's not. Let's see now if he, he could react also to, to this miss. But uh, a goal would, would, that, would that be amazing for him. The fullbacks are so influential. Yeah. They are basically two wingers from Lugona. Yeah. They're high up the pitch. They're offering something every time. Theo Hernandez on that top side of the pitch. He's got so much space. Look, like in this occasion. Play a look, fake, a couple of step overs, whipped to the back post. Xerxes wins the header. I'm actually quite surprised he didn't try and head it down and, and play for a pass. We have a pose already, but but I think for for Lucone, because Storari is just speaking with uh, with this coach. Yeah, no, maybe Storari. I, I'm three nil up inside 22 minutes, and my my coach is saying <laughs> pause the game. <laughs> what, what is what, wrong? What are you doing? You can't change anything. I'm literally. Yeah. All over him. I've saved the penalty. I've scored three goals. Now maybe because I know um, Lukonez coach, and it's like a perfectionist. Okay. So maybe spot uh, one. Uh, yeah, thing. conceding a penalty for him it's a big mistake, and uh, he wants to bring back to the right mentality his player. But you you said it well. Three three nil up. I don't, but I think maybe we have technical issue. Maybe we'll wait and see. You are watching. The East Serie A 2024 Finals, the international broadcast, the global feed. The three of us will be guiding you through, myself, Rachel Buckley, Brandon Smith and Dale Ribeira. You said it quite good. Ribeira. <laughs> Ribeira. Nice, nice one. Guiding you through the action over the next couple of days to find out who will be lifting the E Serie A 2024 Championship, which players will be signing their spots into the E Champions League as well as the FC Pro World Championship finals? And this year, leagues are crucial, absolutely, they are so important. In fact, we have seen also in the in the previous game uh, foreigners joining uh, others league, no, yeah. Oli Boli, Darkley not oh, playing their leagues but coming here. I was gonna say, obviously, you've got your um. You know exactly sort of how the players are feeling, mm -hmm. and you you would say sort of an English phrase, you your finger on the pulse. You know how mm -hmm. people are feeling. When you start to see non-Italians coming in, what's the what's the vibe from the players? Because I mean, you've you've also darkly obviously eliminated now, but Oli Bolly, a top top player coming into the league, are they happy with it? Does it bring the league up, or are they thinking go to another league? Nah, <laughs> I, I think that uh, from my side. So uh, I I am a caster and uh, I want to to see that the competition grow, no, uh, and it's growing a lot. And uh, Oli and uh, Darkly's presence, of course, it's a it's a clear sign of it. But I think that maybe uh, if I were a player, no, uh, if uh, uh, a guy tell me, look, Oli will play the the e -seria, I will say, oh no, <laughs> with with so many leagues, why the e -seria? So, we need to get some confirmation, because as you can see, the score is nil-nil. No, I, I, I think that the score... Is it 3-0 yeah, still? Yeah, Let's, yeah, yeah. We'll no. try and get some confirmation from... Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's 3-0 for okay. sure. And they will start the game from the... 22nd 20 minute. minute. Yeah. We're going to have to do some mental maths. <laughs> to make yeah. sure that we keep up to date yeah, with the yeah, scoreline. Yeah. Update the guys as well. Ooh. Big goal from Sterari. That is now 3-1. Maybe I have some information. Yeah. Yeah. 3-1. Three three one. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so imagine there's a three on the scoreboard. Yeah. 
it's not one nil for Sassu from for Sassuolo, but a three one for for Torino. But a good goal from Sorari. Great goal, gave yeah. him a lot of confidence as yeah. well. Give him a lot of uh, hope for uh, for this game. Well, as the score reads right now, Torino and Luco leading three goals to one against Sorari and Sassuolo. Hernandez once again floated to the back post. Xerxes with the header, I think he was offside. just offside. Yeah. But once again, too much space on the on the far post. Storari needs to be more more aggressive in defense because Luco at the moment has so much space. Joe Hernandez has got the entire pitch. Yeah, yeah, he's carrying so yeah. much for the the attacking side for uh, for Luco. Mistake there in possession. Saw Nate in the chat as well. Hello, my friend. Hope things are well. A great climax coming up to all the different leagues around the world. Ooh, beautiful. Ronaldinho looking to put inside, but a and corner. another corner kick. So let's see if he's more aggressive with the goalkeeper. Mm. Still, I think he must be more aggressive. It's making the same mistake. Same mistake. You're offering way too much at the near post. Same mistake. On back post. Another corner. Not on this occasion. Maybe not. But he was lucky here because he made the same uh, the same mistake. The keeper was in two in the middle and the defender was his name is his way. Okay. We had the so just got confirmation yeah, from yeah. people behind the scenes and the admins that the goals that were scored before are valid. So as we said, the goal that Sassuolo scored is active and counting. But also the Torino's one. Yes. So three, three one. Three one. Chance, Ronaldo inside Ooh. the box, great feet, big goal, 3-2, hello. And this is Sorari, as I said, this is the real Sorari that I wanted to see in this competition, the one that was hiding maybe during the regular season. Two identical goal also, from the same side, Ronaldo with his left foot, left foot which makes no difference for him with his five-star skill. Uh, weak foot. A bit of love in the chat yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasted potato. I love this <laughs> Italian pundit. I love you guys. I've seen <laughs> it. <laughs> Coming forward here, Ronaldinho linking in with Hernandez once again. Ronaldinho, green times. Nice one. Let's see that near post. But another corner kick. He's not even moved the goalkeeper a little bit, but he's. Sorari, please don't do this anymore. Just offers the entire up yeah. the near post. It's a goal. You have to move oh, the goalkeeper more. Bro. Move him to the near post more. Please. Oh. Sorry, I, I, I'm going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There's the same mistake again. A, 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 you can't defend like that with, uh, with Lucone. Lucone is a killer on the corner kicks. It has... It, we saw a... A game earlier on today, I've seen so many games today, I'll, I'll try and find yeah. exactly who it was. I believe it was Gabriel Antonini versus um, Hezers. Mm -hmm. And there was so many corners, but none of them were scored because each of them were so aggressive with the goalkeeper. They weren't only moving them once, yeah, 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 yeah. moving them four or five times. Yeah. If you just make one movement with the goalkeeper, you will concede corners. Also, also when uh, I, I commented on Virgil's game, uh, uh, it was a question that I asked him because he improved so much with the uh, with the keeper, and it's a key factor. He, he told me, so uh, you have to, to master the keeper movement. The score line right now, as it stands, Torino four, Sassuolo two. Yeah. It's four two right now. Juventus did win for anyone who's wanting that Alexandro update as and well. Enjoy your uh, Alexandro update. Enjoy your 90 upgrade. So, yeah. Also, a, uh, a funny story on this because Danny Pitbull is uh, is very scaramantic. Okay. So <laughs> he didn't. Uh, he didn't complete it. He, <laughs> he didn't want to, to see all the message that comes on his Instagram and social media. Uh, so everyone was asking, please win yep. the game versus uh, Empoli because I want uh, Alexandro to upgrade. He pleased a lot of people. 
Last chance of the half, one additional minute is given. Good defending on that occasion, but the ball will bounce back and that will probably do us for the first half unless the Swallow can throw this ball forwards. Telenoglu out wide, the referee will let it play. Buchanan into Xerxes, Ooh. just went back too far and that will Ooh. do us. Yeah. A great game. Uh, I think once the restart has occurred, Sterrari's been a lot better. Yeah, completely different win. Okay. I think what we're going to do, now we've got into half time, we're going to uh, reset the lobby so the correct score line is active in the top yes, corner. So they will fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if we went to extra time and then yeah. it got a bit complicated. So and we're going to reset. Also for the viewers, very yeah, tricky to, to follow Stops the match. Stops me repeating myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what have you made of it so far? We've watched 45 minutes of action. Mistakes on the corners have cost Sterrari. Two goals. Two goals. Two big goals. Yeah. I think for Luco. A penalty save also as well. He started really well, but he has slowed down a little bit. Yeah. Maybe the the, re, the, the first reset had an impact on, uh, on him. Let's see how he reacts now to the second uh, reset. But as you said, uh, he started very well. He also saved the Sterrari's penalty. So we we have to, to leave now the, the second half. And let's see if Sorari can can find a, a goal. What we've got coming up for in you? The early stage. I hear you ask. Well, after this game, it's going to be Obran in action versus Lone Wolf, and then my game of the day, the final game of the day, Cosmo Guaneri against Flocox. Two names synonymous with Italian FC. Two names that have competed globally around the world, coming together. Only one of them will go through. Yeah, Lecce but versus Cagliari. Cosimo is, I think, one of the of the best face of our esports scene, and this one is its first in Syria, and Flocox. Uh, I think everyone knows Flocox in Italy because he competes at high level, but he's also the third biggest creator in Italian FC. So it's incredible. He managed the, the both sides. Yeah. yeah, competitive so well. I mean, there is a few players that I can think of that do that. I think Stokes. Yeah, Stokes, Stokes probably is the best example because um, last year he, he went made, to the World Cup. Yeah, as made well. the biggest tournament of yeah. the year as well as doing content and, and being yeah. active streaming daily every streaming. day. Yeah, but it is important for players to be able to yeah, for make sure. their brand bigger. And you're probably thinking as well when you do that. Like you might not see the, the long-term investment, however, it will continue getting you opportunities and contracts and for sure. you're putting money in the bank for later down the line, not figuratively. <laughs> We're back underway, you can see the score is updated in the top corner now. To, uh, I think it's manually. We don't, we, don't, we don't say that. We don't say that. <laughs> we don't say that. No, I, I love the passion. <laughs> oh, it's crucial because they, I think so, they didn't reset the, the lobby for stamina reason. Yes. Maybe. See what Sterari's got cooking here on this left-hand side of the pitch. Nano Nazario, Ooh. corner of his own. Uh, but I think that Lucone... Look how more but, aggressive yeah. he is with the keeper. He, he's constantly moving the keeper. Pull it, floated to the back post. Van der Sar on it, and I think he was just yeah, offside. It was offside, but look how far went with the keeper. Because he knows how to defend them. Lovely pass to Ronaldinho once again. Hernandez. He's always the pass that's the out ball. He's that one that's offering something going forward. However, when you do lose possession and your fullbacks are high up the pitch, there can be a space in behind. Yeah. If because you have two two centre backs, and that's it. That's what you got in defence. Great pressure, winning the ball high up the pitch. Just looks to be playing a little bit too fast at the moment. There's still loads of time left. You've got nine minute halves, you've got a decent chunk of the clock left to play with. Yeah, also because we have seen it before. 
when Sorari attacks with his composure, he can find actually the space. So there's no, no need to rush right now. 30 minutes left are so much in this format. R9 getting in front of Vidic. Bizek comes across. Ronaldinho on the finesse. It's going to fall. Great save from Van der Sar. What's a nice dive. No Quentin. goalkeeper movement on that one. Ooh. Offers the near post. Got away with it there. But it's how quick he's taking the corner as well. And it is, and it is uh, an easy one from Lucona. But I love the diamond green on the, on the headshot. Yeah. The header. going to start to see this game become a little bit more stretched going into the final 20 minutes. Hernandez, Ronaldinho linking up, Hullet. He wants the run from Buchanan, but turns around and once again, he's got more touches than anyone else on the pitch at this point, Hernandez. He's the constant out ball, he's the constant threat on this left-hand side. Team of the year version of him. But he's out of position at the moment. Just slots back in and you're going to see a slower approach to attack him. Yeah, Lugone is slowing down a lot. Maybe managing the time. Dribble straight into a red shirt. Just Storari. Cross whipped in. Hernandez touch. Good defending, but a bad pass out the back. Opens up the space to Ronaldo. You give a player of Luco's quality a chance on the edge of the box, it's going to result in a goal. Ah, this is a massive mistake here for Storari because he was defending well. He, he retake the possession very good, but you can't uh, lose the ball uh, in, in defense like, like that when, as you said, you have uh, an opponent like Lucone, which is so, so bloody, bloody composed when he has to attack the, the, the space with these step overs. Just second nature. Mm -hmm. Question in the chat there. Who is better, Van der Sar 90 or Czech 93? Van der Sar 92. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the, the, the foot birdie version of Van der Sar is amazing. I think the best goalkeeper in, uh, in the game for sure. And uh, I tried lots of players uh, in, uh, in the keeper position and uh, he's my, my favorite one. Five goals to two, Luko leads. Game's not over yet because of the, the time left on the clock and it just gives you that little bit of breathing space if you can get a goal back. However, the more bodies and the more attacking space that you start to take, there will be space at the back. I think it's maybe maybe time for the full uh, pressure for Sorar. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it looks like he's gone yeah, for that. Yeah. Oh, it was a good chance this one. Probably got to score a goal, Storari, before the 79th, 80th minute, you would say. To have a, a Mobacha Sean Allen uh, situation, yeah. if you remember. That's very tough for him. Ronaldinho trying to inc interlink a little bit of play. On the left-hand side of the pitch. Now he's going to work the ball across. Hull it on the finesse. He'd already moved the keeper and was already reading the space. Corner. Played in. Not very aggressive with the goalkeeper on this occasion. Hull it wins it. And when you're not aggressive, it just opens up the goal for your opponent. Yes, but uh, Lucone here, bring the keeper back. So when Give him you, a chance. Yeah. It, it wasn't stuck in the middle like previously.
We appreciate everyone sticking with us this fine Thursday afternoon, morning, evening, wherever you may be. Watching some of the best FC in Italy here at the E Serie A 2024 finals. By the end of play today, we will have eight remaining. Ronaldinho inside the box. I think he had the space. Still on, maybe? Offside. No. He had space to shoot with Ronaldinho. And he loves the timed green from there. Yeah. The beautiful city of Verona is the place where all the action is going down. But only one of these two will be victorious in Verona. And it's looking to be Luco of Torino as he leads 6 2. It's done and dusted here. Uh, Richard Lucone made a massive, massive performance. And also, he loves to celebrate on uh, camera like he, like he did. And commiseration for Storari because he was reacting very well after the three goals lead from, from Lucone. I just saw a, a, a comment in the chat which will get a little bit of conversation going as we go into the final five minutes here. The game is pretty much over. Who's your favourite ever player to have played in Serie A? You mean the real players? In the real players, yeah. It's a simple question for me. Who is it? Francesco Dot. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. I, I want him into the game. Maybe next year? Let us know in the chat as well. Who's your favourite player? We've ever played in the Serie A. I think mine. Ah, which is which is yours? It's a bit of a weird one. L really? I'm gonna go Chiellini. Oh, Giorgio Chiellini. I just think like, why? It's just so like such a presence. Okay. In defence. Wow, Nate, Nate with Amauri. Wow. It's a vintage one. <laughs> I can tell Nate's getting up there in age. Wow, it's a, it's a vintage one. <laughs> Maldini, Del Piero, Zlatan. Zlatan's a great answer. Yeah. I met Zlatan three weeks ago. Really? During, yeah, during uh, Verona Milan, here in Verona. Nice guy? Yeah. He, he, uh, he spoke with the father, with okay. his child, for like 20 minutes. Wow. Yeah, he was amazing. Buffon. Ruby Costa. Jonathan. Buffon. <laughs> well, there you have it. Full time. The conversation will continue. But, unfortunately, it's the end of the road for Sterari and Sassuolo. And he's Serie A. Not to be remembered by. Quickly forgotten, you would say. Because it just wasn't. It never really clicked for him. Mm -hmm. um, on the other side of it. Torino and Luco. Before the game, I asked you they were favourites for this game. Where do you put them in terms of the overall competition now? Because uh, they're guaranteed to be in the top eight. Do you think maybe any Champions League? I think they are like one of the favourites for the final. To win it all. Yeah, for the final and to win it all. Yeah. Because the Lucone is playing really, really good. Yeah. He, I think we saw a real. It was well rounded. He was good offensively, he was good defensively. He was on set pieces. He he looked really, really solid. What we've got coming up for you, one of the biggest names in Italian FC is right around the Colburn, a corner, the Colburn. <laughs> Give me a taste of what's coming up. That's Colburn. Like a, you made a fusion. <laughs> he's coming up right around, um, and he's going to be taking on Bologna's lone wolf. That's going to be a really good game. And then rounding us out today, game number seven, the final Opportunity to get into tomorrow's uh, finals Friday. That's what I'm going to call it. Finals Friday. Final Friday, yeah. Um, it's going to be Cagliari, Cosimo Guanieri, and Lowcox of Lecce. Uh, just before we go to a break, I believe we've got an interview, mm -hmm. which um, you're going to have the opportunity. I'm going to sit back because I don't know Italian. But I've got you want me to translate it? Uh, if possible, when you yeah, start hearing sure. some questions coming through mm -hmm. uh, to Luco, if you would be so kind to tell us how he's feeling yeah, sure. and uh, what he's what he's got going on, because that interview is coming up very, very shortly indeed. The East Serie A 2024 finals, two games remaining for today, will be rolling on very shortly indeed. 
think that interview is ready, so I'll take it away. Yeah. Insegnami com'è. Aspetta. Una M. Una? M. M. Oddio. He's explaining his, uh, his celebration. It's an M and a V. I, I think it's for. Ah. He, he celebrates like that for his uh, for his friends that lives uh, in uh, in his uh, neighborhood. So, which is the name of his neighborhood. dentro fuori però domani iniziano le vere finali perché ogni yeah. partita poi ti, ti permette di accedere a un qualcosa quindi domani sarà veramente durissimo Lisa asked are you happy for, for this win and he of course he replied for, for sure but the actually competition for me begins tomorrow ti danno in più e come influiscono e quanto influiscono sulla partita allora influisco veramente tanto c'è Francesco che è il mio vero e proprio coach che dal punto di vista diciamo anche mentale mi dà una carica assurda okay. e con cui abbiamo lavorato tanto e poi accanto invece c'è Samu Gamer che vabbè, è il mio compagno ma supporto. È, è un supporto più dal punto di vista tattico perché lui è un player fortissimo Lisa asked how important is to have behind you Francesco e and Samu and uh, Lucone replied Francesco which is my actual coach it's very important because I trained with him every day so he knows me very well and he knows uh, the right words to say to me in the right moment and uh, Samu helps me a lot with tactics uh, substitution because he's very young because Samu has 17 and uh, this is his first year competing but uh, he's la he plays like a veteran so he knows every aspect of the game so also he uh, has helped me a lot. There you have it. Thank you very much. Um, it's really good, that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't imagine how hard it is to hear it and then yeah. instantly translate it. Yeah, but uh, I, I am quite comfortable <laughs> with it. I have to say. Well, uh, make sure you, you give him a big GG as well. Uh, our resident translator slash interviewer throughout the next couple of days. Um, as we said, two games remaining for today. But before we get there, we're going to take a very short break. What's go going on on the Italian stream, if you are interested? I believe it's going to be a rap battle. Yeah. <laughs> you heard that right, a rap battle. It, it, it's very cool because it's the second year in a row that it we is. have the same guys uh, having this kind of show, and I recommend it. Um, however, if you're not in for the Italian rap battle, uh, give us about 10 minutes. Go and get yourself a bite to eat. Get yourself a drink. The final two games kick off in 10 minutes' time. Obron is in action at the E Serie A. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Well, we know you couldn't get enough, so I thought we'd bring you back 15 seconds earlier. Um, your new favourite commentary duo taking you through the next couple of games. Big, big game coming up here at the East Serie A 2024 finals because we've got a former champion stepping in. We've got, you said your own words, the best Italian player ever. At the moment, yes. At the moment. Numbers are numbers, <laughs> in, also in this case. Facts speak for themselves. Obren stepping into the booth. If you are joining us back from the Italian broadcast, we hope that you enjoyed the rap battle. However, for right now, we're getting back underway with the hard-hitting bars of FC and making their way to the stage. The one and only Obren. Talk to me about Obren. You know him very well. Um, is he just that guy? Yeah, he's, I think, one of the most complete players here because he, he knows how to defend. He, he knows perfectly every kind of mechanics when uh, when he has to, to attack. So, as you said, he could be the guy. On the other side of the stage, the lone wolf from Bologna. Um, a crazy story when you look at his sort of career and his, yeah. his aspirations. He, he, he is playing. He wants to play. He didn't play all the games in the group. I think he played half. Yeah. They're all thereabouts Basically. of the group games. Um, he's obviously got other things going on. He doesn't play all the time. But he always seems to make it. And he always... I don't really recall too many times where he's been blown out the water. He had a really good run at last year's. Yeah. He's if I remember correctly. Yeah, he, he lost versus Kaccia. Yeah. With the, uh, versus Monza. But as I was saying uh, behind the scenes to you, Lone Wolf for sure is one of the of the guys that helped this scene uh, growing in Italy because he was the first player to sign for, for a professional team, Sampdoria, back, uh, back in the days. And basically, he's competing since 2010. So wow. it's been like 15 years of uh, competitive uh, FIFA and now FC for uh, for him. And uh, I was saying, uh, maybe you, you don't expect a lot from Lone Wolf during the regular season. But when uh, Lone Wolf is in a knockout game, surprises are coming. So I, I think that... This game could be a massive blow up, like 5 0 for Obrun, for example, or a tight game like the previous one between Danny and uh, Sales. Do you see any world? I just saw someone in the chat, uh, Heisenberg, this game can finish 10 0. Yeah. It, it could. Do you see any world in which Obrun doesn't win here? I don't know, honestly. Uh, I think. Would he that... have to play it? Sorry to cut you off. Would he have to play the worst game of this yeah, year he's played? Of his life. And Lone Wolf would have to be the best. The best one, for sure. And also, as you can see in Obrun's back, for the first time, he's now joined also by Feraspe, which is the, for sure, the Nicolas uh, coach, yep. the, the very well-known uh, man behind lots of Nicolas' uh, important uh, trophies. And for sure, on, uh, on his left, there is, there is also Hollywood backing uh, Obrun for the fourth season uh, consecutively. Yeah, I remember Obrun, um I mean, it's always at the end of the season. It would be a shock if he was to lose here. Yeah. Not progressing into an E-Champions League, not progressing into a, a World Championship because he has become a staple. He has become a name that is at big events and usually going far in big events. You talked about those two people behind them, behind him, should I say, in Hollywood, who's been with him every step of the way. Why bring Fur in? What is it with Fur? Why bring him in? I think because uh, maybe he realized that uh, a more technical uh, help could, uh, could, uh, could help him more, no? Because uh, as uh, I think Lucone said previously with, uh, with the Francesco, uh, Hollywood uh, makes more um, a mind job. So it's more like a mental coach. So he, you've got one more mental now. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. I think now he has the perfect coaching staff because I think uh, Fair, it's uh, it's one of the best uh, in uh, in technical aspect. He plays the game a lot, like yes. a lot. So he he knows uh, every every kind of aspect, and Hollywood for sure knows how to say to Auburn in the right moment. So you've got 
Jurgen Klopp and the Pep Guardiola <laughs> together. Yeah, basically, yeah. Let's see if that management team and that coaching staff can pull him through against the lone wolf of Bologna. What you've seen so far today, there's been some huge performances. I would say for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of the favourites have won. Yep. Um, Danny Pitbull, victorious. I, I think basically all of them. The Maybe Darkly. I thought Darkly might have beat Virgil. I think that was a bit of a 50-50 game. Yeah, also Frosinone versus Genoa, Fabio and uh, Oli. Those two games yep. were two 50-50s. So I think that usually today we have seen uh, always the favourite going through. A couple of interesting selections there. Patrick Vieira or Lone Wolf. Uh, Rafael Liao getting a start alongside Zambrotta and Locatelli. Locatelli's going to play at centre-back. Yeah. Swap with Vieira in game. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a back four of Zambrotta, Vieira, Bissek and Hernandez. No. Powerhouses. Yeah, interesting. No Vidic in sight. As for Auburn's team, more standard procedure with what we've got. Ronaldo Nathario, Rude Hullick, Cafu and Vidic. Team of the year, R9, is selected. One of those two free icons would be Hullick or Ronaldo. Probably Hullick. I think he's a bit more expensive. Yeah. Um, at the back, Vidic, Cafu, both Golato and Van der Sar. Future, uh, it's foot birthday, should I say, ultimate birthday uh, version of Van der Sar in goal. So there are you two teams. I've seen Obrun also testing a Cafu okay. in, in the, into the midfield. Okay. During during the during the game, and uh, I think that uh, Lone Wolf is the only one playing the road to the final version of Liao from the beginning. I've not seen anyone else use Liao. Yeah, also as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you have it. They're the teams. They're the players. You know what's on the line. We're underway. It's going to be Verona exceed Oberon from left to right. And representing Bologna will be Lone Wolf 92. The 92 goes with the date of birth. 32 years old. Yeah. 10 years difference Yeah, between the two of them. And he's now also a father. Only on the finesse early doors. As for Oberon, just... Teasing Van der Sar off the line. We uh, pleased to be live here in this fantastic arena in Verona. We hope to have kept you company throughout today's action because we do it all again tomorrow. Four quarterfinals, two semis and a grand final all taking place on finals Friday, as I've coined it. For sure, it's also trickier for Auburn to play an opponent that maybe you don't know much about him, no? Well, it's whipped to the back post. Teo Hernandez just nods it away from Rude Hullet, but yeah, the, the unexpected. Yeah. Uh, it's also Lone Wolf. He might not play the quote-unquote meta. He might be a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. with the team selection, it's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit strange, and sometimes... And Strange and odd can be really, really tough to play against. Yeah, and also maybe if uh, you are a lone wolf, you know how to find lots of information no, about Obrun's play style. But uh, if you are Obrun, lone wolf is not streaming or making uh, contents, no? You so didn't even play all the group games. Yeah, as well. So you only got sort of half the games yeah, yeah, yeah. to look at. And, um, uh, and also, basically, he mainly played the first part, the first weekday of the group. So in the second weekday... Um, he, he let Nicky plays, so this this is triggered as well. Yeah, Nicholas, look at the chance. Thank you. Mm. Good chance there. Good defending. When you look at the groups, um, it was disappointing for Bologna in Group A. They finished on three points, only better than Empoli in that particular group. As for Group B. It was a third place finish for Verona. Ten points, six games, three wins, one draw, and two defeats. However, they were in a really tough group alongside Genoa, Juventus, and Udinese. That was certainly yeah. a tougher group. Yeah, you can really call with four finals. Yeah, four no, you can you can call that game the group of that because yeah. basically all the the favorites that now we are talking about were in the group B.
is a, a little bit quiet at the moment. We'll uh, try and get you some gecko maybe sound. A, maybe a chance. Hullitz on the power shot. Rifles it in the bottom corner. Nothing the goalkeeper can do about it. And a great finish. And a great start to the game for Auburn. The same opener that Danny had before versus uh, Sales. A power shot with a gullet left foot. Five-star weak foot also for uh, for Rudo Hullet. And uh, that's why you play him also in, in the attacking positions. That's why he's so expensive yeah. as well. He's I think he's still on, uh, on the cap. 15 <sighs> millions. Crazy. That's your first goal of the game. Said it could get quite ugly for Lone Wolf. Well, that's the first of potentially many. As straight from kickoff, the ball's turned over and Auburn has the chance to come forward. You can see all the results from today's matches there. Scrolling through at the bottom of your screen as well. You have just missed the highest scoring game so far. Torino's Luco beating Sassolo Esports. Six goals to two. Chance to Hernandez inside the box. Could strike at goal. Hits the post. Aubrey looks to be in one of those moods where he will not let up. Kandreva looking for the extra pass. Chalonoglu defends well. I love the all one uh, speed boost that uh, Aubrey did with, uh, with Hernandez. Probably not the best timing because there was no timing for, uh, for Hernandez. Maybe the green would... Uh, would have been a good choice, but another good opportunity for him. I really don't like the team selection of Lone Wolf. I think when when there's so many players who have selected such similar teams, mm -hmm. they're not just following the same code. They've that's clearly the best team to yeah. select. Yeah, sure. So when you go so far out and you use such different players, someone like Vieira. Rafael Liao, Zambrotta. That's something strange going on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you are not on the point. But unless you've seen something in those yeah. players that you think, I have to have them in. Mm -hmm. I mean, Vieira doesn't even have aerial plus. Yeah. In a 50-50 in, a in the air, nine times out of ten against Xerxes, he's going to lose it. Mm -hmm. So, I just, I don't particularly like the way that that team's been put together. Could prove me wrong as he comes forward here with Zambrotta. Scoop to the back post, R9 up. It, but he's not gone for the team of the year version of Ronaldo Nazario, who does possess aerial plus as well. Yeah, just the regular version. Yeah, because the the Totti the Totti version of R nine maybe it's not that big in terms of body type, but the aerial sometimes helps him to win some chances. Lovely pass, switching the play to Cafu, just keeps it in Oof. play as well. Can drive a first time pinged pass over to Chalanoglu. He looks to scoop it back in, but it will only fall as far as R9. Cafu scooped back into the box. Hullick with a touch. Offers Hernandez the overlap, but I think it was just yeah. offside. But yeah. Played out quite nicely there. Yeah, Auburn loves so much switching the plays from, uh, from side to side. Just seeing the first third of this game already concluded. Lone Wolf, I think you said this, didn't you? It's either going to be 5 or 6 nil, or it's going to be quite close, but Auburn's always going to be in control, even if the game was 1-1. One, one. Yeah, but I think Auburn uh, doesn't want to rush too much to avoid uh, some free spaces to, to Lone Wolf at the moment because, you know, these games are, are very long and you need to be always... At, at full focus, at 100%. If you are just joining us as well, I see a lot of conversation about, did Juventus win? Juventus Desire won the game. Alexandro will be getting a plus yeah. two. So Enjoy your upgrade, guys. Enjoy your plus two, because Juventus yeah. did win. I think tomorrow, maybe. Or, just, or, or maybe tonight as well. Maybe like Christmas. Tomorrow you woke up and you, you will find your present, <laughs> your plus two. They beat Empoli three goals to two. Danny Pitbull got you the upgrade on your Alex Sandro item. GG for him in the chat, guys. Chance. Dinked into the box. Oh! 
could have been something special, but in the end. Ah, because you know, these acrobatic finishings are, are more manual, no? So you have to be super precise with them. Talked about that switch of play again. Hernandez, he, he is the MVP of these teams. I just think he, he's so good offensively, he's so good defensively. Cafu ripped into the box, R9 crashes off the crossbar. This has been all over it. R9 was cruising there uh, in, inside the area without any any kind of defense going in his way. I'm shocked it's only 1-0. Yeah, at the moment uh, we could have easily been at least two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Zambrotta down the byline just dribbles it out of play there, does Lone Wolf. But I think if you're Lone Wolf and you're Bologna, you can go into half time. You're only losing 1-0. Yeah. You're thinking, if I am Lone Wolf, I'm I, in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I will uh, definitely say the same. It's just 1-0, maybe a lucky chance, a rebound, or a well build up yeah. into the attack, maybe. Maybe it will give some hopes. If you can go into that last 10 minutes or so with an opportunity to win the game. Yeah, with, with only one uh, one goal deficit. Yeah. Just he watching the goalkeeper. Yeah, I think he moved quite decently because it's near the, the first post. He's going to pull Vidic to the near post. There is Vidic, whipped in. Yeah, nice. Vizek defends well. Good defense here. Can drive it. Back out wide to Rude Hullet. Just looking for an opening, looking for any sort of avenue to attack. Cafu now brought into play. Whip pass plus. He's not going to cross on this occasion. Looking for Theo Hernandez, but he's nowhere to be seen at the moment. He's on this near side. Cafu down the byline. He went to drive it into the box. Last chance. The last chance of the first half, he's going to fall to Obren to double his lead from the corner. Pull it. Maybe now it's to into, uh, to into the middle, like Sarari did previously. Vidic, pull to the near post. Oof. That's going to do us yeah. for the first half of FC. A pretty one-way first half, however, it's only 1-0, as you can see. Obring getting you see. lots of con conversation from Hollywood. Right words into the right moment. Is that, it, is that a notepad that first got behind him? Yeah. I think, yeah. Obviously, we, we don't have mics in the booth. We can't hear what's being said, but lots of instructions being offloaded. I, I, I love these moments because when uh, when the player uh, tries to have some f some information from the from the guys that are behind him, look also Lone Wolf getting information from the youngster. I mean, look first, literally up at the screen saying this, this, this. I, I, the only problem I would have if I was a player in that situation, yeah. it's just information overload. There is so much information coming towards you mm -hmm. that I, I find it hard to. I'd maybe want like three things, like three very quick, this is what I should be looking for, this is what he's doing, like clear instructions. If yeah. I were getting so much information. Yeah, it would, it would be also also tricky because you are fully loaded yeah. and maybe your mind is not focused then on the game. Yeah, sure. Well, headphones and headsets are going back on. Yeah, I think we are all set. Lone Wolf trailing only by a goal to nil at the halfway point. This is your East Serie A 2024 finals. Day one of two days of non-stop Italian FC. A little bit of vintage vibes with Lone Wolf also with the cable headset. Yeah. <laughs> what do we have coming up for you later on today? Lecce Esports and Flowcox rounding out the day against Cosimo Guaneri. That'll be coming up in about 25 minutes time. And then all attention turns to tomorrow. The top eight in action, starting with the quarterfinals. 
That's not offside. We also have to see where Hezers yeah. is going to put himself in the bracket. Yeah, at I, the top or at the bottom. It, it will be the final uh, choice of the day. The final emotion for us. Rude Hullet twisting and turning. It would send shockwaves throughout the tournament if Bologna were to knock out Ellis Verona. But it's just not going to happen. Van der Sar with a huge save that could and maybe should have been 2 0. Maybe a ball roll there would have been the, the best choice. I didn't like much this, uh, this fake shot. It's unbelievable Rinder. dribbling. Yeah with Reinders, it's an amazing card. Zambrotta out wide, creates a little bit of space at the near post for R9, back post, whipped, he's got up, he's not put anything on it. I didn't know if he could have just shot. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah, because Auburn made uh, yeah. a crazy keeper movement there, but it paid off, so. He just to him. He took the risk and the risk prevailed, it paid off for him. Zerxi, player locked in the box. Cafu turns back onto his right. It's a Travella cross. What a cross that is from Cafu. And a big, big save from the Rude Hullet header. Short corner played. Hullet again involved. Kalanoglu. A lot of space. Of space. Linked it up. Back out wide. Brazilian Cafu. Into Cantreva, but that's going to fall to Patrick Vieira. That's a fake shot with your goalkeeper. Ooh. You've nearly <laughs> given the ball away. I don't like that at all. <laughs> well, he got away with it. I think a long wolf needs oh. <laughs> Nice. R9 into Hullet. Just attacking the space. I don't want to say he looks a little bit lost for ideas, Aubrey. But yeah, maybe. We there's got just a few things where yeah. I expected him to continue, maybe moving the ball up, continuing yes. passing. It's it's not doing that much yeah. at the moment. Yeah, maybe enjoying the lead. But in this game, you may never know. So if I am Aubrey right now, I want to push for the second goal. Absolutely, because. As Mentally as well, the longer yeah. that this game continues at 1-0. And here we are. Lone Wolf gets a lot of confidence. That confidence is now shattered. And here we because are. Because we asked for maybe just a little bit more composure and quality in the final third. And Auburn showed us what that looks like. But the goal always comes like, like previously. Which side from Auburn left to right, then quickly goes into the, into the area. Driven pass and uh, an easy an easy tap in. Rafael Leal, rapid plus, and whipped cross, but it's only going to fall out for a corner. Maybe a chance to go direct. It's gone early into the box, but Vidic did defend well. R9. Attacking the space on the edge. That's poor from Lone Wolf and a shake of the head. He knows that was quite poor. Five minutes. What a switch. Ooh. Uh, maybe Gullit is offside. I think he is. Yep. Oh, uh, I, I don't know if you if you saw it maybe on Instagram. Obrun made a crazy goal with this uh, first time uh, switch side with the power shot uh, with Teo Hernandez. Like 35 yards. Outside the area, it was crazy. I will show you later. Here is Cafu getting forward from right back. Clearly, he likes an offensive fullback, as a lot of people do. But to then put the coins in at right back as well, it shows how important that position yeah. is to him. Yeah, it's crucial when you play 1 Fullbacks are are crucial to your attacking side, also. I saw like a camera on fair for uh, for maybe uh, a video. I love when uh, when teams 
producing video like behind the scenes yeah. that would really important. Yeah, the, the viewers into the action. I think a lot of other esports have done sort of that behind yeah. the scenes content really well. Yeah, I, I love the Footwits vlog from the yep. last E Club World Cup. It was so good, all the emotions. Absolutely. And I think the more more teams are doing that and yeah. really sort of And the it helps a lot the yeah. scene. For Absolutely. Me. You are watching the East Area Finals, a two-day event here live in Verona, Italy. Surrounded by the mountain tops. And there's only one Italian, maybe not Italian actually, but <laughs> one player. It could be a Swede, it could be Holly Bolly, <laughs> standing on top of the mountain by the end of play tomorrow. Are you enjoying your staying here? I am, it's very nice. Like the food? Yeah. The city? Did you know that the uh, Verona has the third largest amphitheater in Italy? Yeah, tomorrow we will visit. Are we? You know? Yeah, tomorrow morning. I didn't know. You, that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's scheduled. You will well, come that's, with that's us. That's my plans. Yeah, yeah. It looks like the Colosseum in Rome. It does. Yeah, thirty thousand seats. <laughs> oh, what a finish. wow! Antonio Candreva. Wow. Obren, a warrior in the Colosseum. And usually we don't see much Trivelas right now because uh, they have been nerfed a little bit but uh, this Candreva card is just amazing what a goal flick in the right boot into the top left corner and Aubrey with 20 minutes left to play booking his spot into the top eight of the E Serie A finals. Lone Wolf, unfortunately, has just not had the quality to hurt Open. Yeah, basically, he didn't show us a single good uh, occasion into the attack. This could be his first chance. Yeah. To hurt Aubryn, down the byline, crossed in, but it's going to spiral up and away, giving Lukaku way too much time to get up and win the header. And Aubryn comes forward for a four. I think also this Leo card for Long was didn't play as expected for him. Uh, you put Vieira at centre back, yeah. and Vieira's been useless at the point. moment. Yeah, really yeah. poor. I said it in the first half, and I think it's not helped him, but the draft, yeah. the draft has been. It was a poor draft that he selected. Yeah, also because in the in the Golazo promo, we we saw a lot of cards like yeah. Vidic, Desali as well. So Cafu. Cafu. I, I don't like the choice of Vieira as a as a centre back. We had so different, so many different options. Also Blanc as yeah. well. Zambrotta. Trying to slide Liao into space, but oh, Marty. way too much to ask. With 10 minutes left to play, it looks to be simply too much of a task for Bologna's Lone Wolf. Lukaku attacking the near post, slots it in the near post, and that is game, set, and match. Aubren will be going through to the top eight. And maybe this could decide where Hezzas wants to put himself in the bracket. Because you would be going away from Aubren. Yes. yes, but I think that after Virgil's game, I would have be afraid also of, of Virgil because he's playing very good. I, of course, I will try to avoid Aubren uh, mainly. But we we should keep an eye open also on Virgil. You're gonna get an Open versus Luko. Yeah. What a final! It's going yeah. to be a great game. I mean, the only reason I say that, if you put yourself in the in the bottom, probably going to have to play with Obron or Luko. Obron or Luko yeah. in the top. You, Danny. Danny. Pitbull, yeah. Who would you? Who uh, it's practically pick, pick basically. Yeah, yeah, it's it's basically the same. And even the, the last game of the day, Cosimo yeah. and Flo Cox, yeah. it's a good game. 
he's a yeah. great opponent so it's going to be a, a tough ask whichever way you, you paint it up and decide where you want to play and I suppose it also your aspirations for what you want out of this if you're thinking I just want to get to the top four mm -hmm. you would pick an easier quarter-final game yeah, you're true. looking who you might face in the final you're looking for the semi-finals and seeing who would I be playing in the semi to avoid if I don't want to play Auburn or yeah, yeah. Luko I'm going to put yeah. myself in the top I don't want to play Danny Pitbull I put myself in the bottom I think that at the moment they will uh, they will think step by step because also Champions League spot will be a massive turnaround Absolutely. for for your season and also for your next season yeah. you know how important it is in terms of contracts and stuff like that you play well in the E Champions League. Yeah. And I think you even mentioned it Yeah, earlier. you may Sweden, never know. Dallas yeah. as well down the line. Yeah. Could give you a lot of confidence. Yeah. Moving into the back end of... Will I see you there in Dallas and in Sweden? I don't know yet. I don't know. Mm. Put me on the spot there. <laughs> Hopefully. We will enjoy maybe a good Texas barbecue. <laughs> Oberlin cruises through. It was what many people expected to happen. However, you've still got to go on the pitch and perform. We said it'll be something like 5 0. He, he, he didn't want to give this. Uh, didn't want really to give you the satisfaction. Did, did, yeah, this satisfaction to us. Looks like it's going to just be 4 for the former E Serie A champion. However, this could be the fifth. Yeah, McGee yeah. cancel. There you go. Thank you, Auburn. It'll be something like 5-0. Well, it's exactly 5-0. And Auburn steamrolls his way into the quarter finals with an emphatic 5-0 win. I think it's the biggest goal margin we've seen all yeah. day. I think uh, it's the only clean sheet as well. Yeah. yeah, it is. What a win from Auburn. What a player. Is he... Your East Serie A champion. Let us know in the chat, actually. Have you just seen the champion for 2024? Do you think Auburn will go all the way? There's a lot of people who will, do think he will. Show us some prediction, guys. Who do you think Who do you think is going to win it? Because that was as emphatic as it comes, I've got to say. Um, Lone Wolf, unfortunately, just never got going. Yeah. He, he didn't ever put himself in the game. Uh -huh. Oberyn was just cruising throughout. Even yeah. at 1-0, yeah, he like he's never in danger. I think that maybe if we read the, um, the, the formation choices that Lone Wolf made from a different perspective, maybe he wanted to play more in defensively yep. and try to maybe um, uh, use that single uh, occasion in the, in the attack. Basically, he had nothing to to use because Auburn was perfect in defense. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, uh, Roberta. Thank you for... For me. It's an honor, Richard. Thank you very much. Um, Honestly. We've got one game remaining, one game left for today. It's going to be coming up right after this break. Cosimo Guanieri versus the fan favorite Flowcox. Coming up after this.
Well, welcome back for one final time here to the East Area Finals Day 1. You might have seen we've gained someone. And I thought we were going to lose someone, but we, we kept you. So there's three of us, three long. Uh, Brandon, you had a couple of games out there, um, sort of getting the vibe of this place, seeing what's happening. Really, really convincing win from Auburn. Absolutely. I mean, look, he uh, he's changed his coach for the first time in, feel like, forever. The Hollywood's not yeah. sitting behind him. But first, Kamenu, what, 10 days ago, won the La Liga Cup with Nicolas out in Spain. Like, he's in fine form. I didn't realise as well that he speaks fluent Italian. I also have to say, this is the first time we use this mic for today. You're incredibly, incredibly loud. Yeah, I feel loud. <laughs> I feel really loud. I'm also on, like, what feels You're like so a booster for, Yeah. So uh, I'm actually not this tall, but I'm apparently <laughs> the tallest man on set right now. So uh, this is good. But look, let's turn our attention to our final game today. Cosimo Guaneri, he's, uh, he's, he's still competing, that man. We saw him for quite some time. I felt like he peaked for a bit, then went pretty quiet, then peaked again. How's he been getting on this year in the Serie A? Uh, I, I think he... he Is it yeah, too loud? He, he, so loud. Yeah, a little bit, but we, we, we could deal with it. Cosimo had uh, a slow start. Uh, in the season because he is playing with uh, Kekova. You may remember yeah, him yeah, from yeah. the... So I'm surprised he's not playing. Yeah, but when you have like uh, a stronger team like Kayari has, it's difficult. So they choose the, the experience, you you know, and uh, Cosimo paid this, uh, this trust because in the, in the second part of the regular season, he had a crazy impact. He was the man behind the, the Danny Pitbull loss. So he was the man behind Udinese first uh, first place in uh, in Group B, and uh, I expect a lot from him because he's, you you may remember him very well, of course, no? especially in that online era. Yeah, he was uh, he, he was incredible. He yeah, comes out in FIFA 21 onto the stage yeah. live now. I mean, on the other side of things, Richard Flo Cox. I mean, content creator, pro player, does he, it, he, he can do it all. He gets some crazy numbers on streams, doesn't he? Yeah, he can do it all. He's also a uh, a former Wicked Wednesdays player as well. Um, he's been quite active during that, but he always gets the invite because of the numbers and the performances that he puts up. I'm a big fan as well. This is, there's no um, bias in this. I love the kits for Lecce. I think it looks like pear drops. That was one of my favourite sweets when I was younger. Um, I really, really like the red and the yellow. And we were in Lecce last year. Great place. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Got to see the architecture. Did you know that we're coming on a, a tour tomorrow morning? No. So we're going to the amphitheater. Yeah, tomorrow we're going to the Arena di Verona. Right. Okay. Yeah, on what, a visit. What, what time are we going? Uh, early, early in the morning. Nine a.m. Uh, no, I think ten. Okay, bingo. Ah, that's a shame. I'm busy at ten. <laughs> of course you are. Well, there you have it. That's our morning sorted, and this is your evening sorted. We've got one game remaining. Uh, when is the show game game happening? Well, Elliot, you're about three and a half hours late. It's already been. And Alexandro, uh, Danny Pitbull and Juventus were victorious. You're going to get a plus two for Alex Sandro. A little bit of insight. Uh, about an hour ago or so, there was a couple of practice games happening backstage. Flo Cox was playing against Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf actually beat him, you, you know, after, really? see, after seeing that 4-0 game there. <laughs> Lone Wolf won 4 one on a practice game and Flo Cox was sitting there saying I'm playing so bad right now so hopefully he's changed that form around doesn't feel confidence after we saw what we saw uh, from Lone Wolf uh, honestly I know Flo Cox very well and he speaks like that it's a big issue because it's very fragile in his mindset he has to think that it's just practice when you step onto the pitch it's diff totally different on the stage no R9 no R9 for Flo yeah. Cox he's gone well Henri the Birthday version. Which but is amazing, but yeah, it's, it's a strange. massive risk. Yeah, it's strange. On the other side of it, Cosmo Guadieri, you're looking at his selections. Understruck Ronaldinho, R9 Team of the Year, foot birthday, uh, Rude Hullet, and then birthday Blanc and Golasso Vidic. The rest of the team pretty similar. You're not going for the Team of the Year version of Tio Hernandez and also Bizek on the bench not starting. Blanc and Vidic, the two centre-backs, with Terracciano in goal. Absolutely, those are the two drafts locked in. 50 million coin budgets. As we said, three icons limit. You're allowed to use any goalkeeper you want, hence what you've seen about the teams. But our last game of the day, and what's interesting, this is, we actually done waiting for either Hezers or Anthony To be honest, the favourites of 
Pitbull's gone through. Oli Bolly. Could Auburn as well. To play. Auburn's yeah. gone through as well. So there's no real uh, advantage of it. Yeah. There is no real easy side or or lesser strong side of the bracket. I think we were talking about this just before you joined us, before the break. And the only... I think they were, they were a big 50-50 game for me. I, I I would have backed Holly Boyd to go through. I think the big 50-50 game was the second game of the day. Fiorentina and Salateana. And uh, Darkly not winning. I think Darkly I probably would have predicted to go through. But Virgil's also a great player. Um, I think other than that, it's been favourite, 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 favourite. And as yeah. we've got further into the day... The favourites have won more convincingly. Yeah. Luco, massive win. Auburn, massive win. Are we about to see another one here? Who would you say the favourite is in maybe, this game? Maybe this is another 50-50, uh, if I have to be honest with you. But if Brandon uh, said his flock issue in training, maybe it's more like a 7.30 if he doesn't regain his composure. I'm have to wait and see. I mean, a question for you, Matteo, is Osamo Quaneri looks to have his first chance of the game. When was this decision made about who would be playing in the Grand Finals? Was it off the back of the last group game, or was it recent? Was it a week ago? Or? No, it, it was made like two weeks ago, but they had the chance to change it uh, was you, was until you, the, the last day. Was you surprised? They're both good players. They're both great players. Are both great play, players, uh, but maybe I was expecting this because... This is his first in Serie A, maybe last, because he's uh, not an odd guy for sure, but it's an, an historic figure for the for our scene. Keiko is a youngster, a newcomer, so for sure he will have lots of chances in the future. He actually substituted him in for the match versus Danny Pitbull mm -hmm. and Juventus, and they went on to beat yeah. Danny Pitbull. So With a crazy performance, it was perfectly played by Cosimo. I think, I think that's the only game that he lost as well in the groups, Juventus. Cost, cost him first place. Yeah, yeah. Lost in the first place, yeah. Because Danny had his destiny on uh, on his end, and uh, Cosimo literally stopped him. If you have just joined us again, this is our playoff day here in East Syria. We are going down from 14 clubs just to eight for tomorrow's quarterfinal bracket play. This will be our last spot going at the bottom half of the bracket. This will be our last quarterfinal to play out tomorrow. You know Flockox pretty well. Would you say? I saw a couple of people in the chat saying he's not a pro; he's a content creator. Do you think that gets to him? No, I I, I think it's it's not the the case because, for example, in the in the last week, he, he reduced massively his uh, streaming hours to focus mainly on the on the tournament. So I think uh, he he found the right way to deal both part uh, of of his job, uh, as you said before, and. Uh, also, Brandon, uh, on every social, uh, try to remember how important it is to, bre to build the, the brand of a player. And this could be a chance for Cosimo Guarneri. Vidic stands in the way again. He's been so impressive today at the back. I've got a feeling we're going to go to extra time this game. The first extra time of the day. It could be, maybe. Cosimo usually loves to play in defense and try to counter-attack. Let's see what we can do now. It's his first full chance of the game. Oh, didn't last too long. Dan Anders just offside. I remember it was last year where Obron was representing Lecce. There's been a lot of twists and turns of yeah. representation. You used to represent this club as well, didn't you? Yeah, with Danny Pitbull. And also Obron used to represent Cagliari in the first East area. Chance, step over, nice exit, and the sword just about gets two hands on it. I mean, what is the process every year with the clubs? Has there, has there ever been a player that's just stuck to the same club three, three, four years? I don't think there has. Yeah, well, then obviously, Juventus, maybe, no? Yeah, but basically, we have two different situations because there are uh, teams that manage their esports side uh, from their own, or others that cooperate with esports teams. So, for example, uh, Cagliari is one, also Lecce, that cooperates with an esports team. So we see, maybe, we are more likely to see changes in these cases. A couple of times there where Cosimo Guarneri has got into those right areas, just has been a skill move or an animation short away from pulling out potentially a, an opening goal of this one. 
And again, you can see at the bottom hand of your screen, all the scores coming through. You can't lie that Obron's probably been the most convincing today, Richard. 5-0. Yeah, I think we, we just said two in a row. You, you saw Torino 6-2 and then the uh, Exceed Hellas Verona performance. Just outstanding, really, from Obron. That's the break again. Xerxi, the interchange with the two Brazilians that stand in his way. Little dink up, that's what he's there to do. Flicks it down into Ronaldinho. A step over as where's a reverse Elastico maybe coming into play. Also, Mogonari just waiting for the perfect time to strike. Is this going to be it now? Around the goalkeeper. Oh, he went down to ground. And very nearly, Matteo. It could have been either a penalty or. Wow, he was dancing with R9 into into the area but yeah it was risky for uh, for Flokox because with the uh, van der Sar he went too far he was sliding uh, into r9 legs again it's another wave of pressure Flokox unable to really get out his box let alone really create any chances will it does not lock onto it Zergsy that looked like a pass for <laughs> from for Blanc we, uh, for you just uh, just watching this game here and seeing Cosimo Guarneri attacking. I think the quickness that he's attacking, if he just takes a little bit off it, and it sounds weird, but reduce the speed of his passing and the dribbling in the final third, I think he'll walk through this defence. I really do. Yeah. He's getting in the areas, but he's almost a little bit too frantic. Yeah, a little... You've just seen a third of this game already completed. Buchanan coming forward. Could be a chance, whipped into the box. Van der Sar always going to be favourite for that. Well, just a confirmation as well that yeah. AC Monza are going to say bottom half of the bracket out of his choice. So he'll be playing the winner of this game. And it will be... Udinese, they stay at that top half of the bracket. Ronaldinho looking to turn back inside. There's that final breakthrough. And it will be Cosimo Guerreri. That makes it all importantly. And this is what you call the Cosimino special. He, he made the tutorial a couple of years ago because he stops with Al1 and then the, the a reverse elastico for Ronaldinho. That sneaks into the defender's legs and find uh, the open goal. Beautiful, beautiful finish. And it, I don't want to say I told him to do that, but he just took the pace out of the attack a little bit. Yeah. Just slowed it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cosimo is a master of this. Absolutely. We've had 35 minutes already, and Flocox hasn't really been in this game. Yeah, at the moment, uh, maybe Brandon was right. He's uh, struggling a little bit, maybe keeping the bad vibes from the training uh, into this game at the moment. Just in that news we heard as well, it looks like it'll be Udinese against Florentina in our opening game tomorrow as well. That confirmation coming through the AC Montello. This could be a second. Kicked away by Van der Sar, corner to come in at the moment. It is one-way traffic in navy blue and red. It could be another chance there, but player that you know very well from Lecce I mean how does he change the game how does he get control back on this one now Matteo I think he has to to try to find his mechanics because he plays a lot of lobs to the Zirkze or Henri to find the the header and the, an open uh, partner in the attack and it's not even trying at the moment Henri's barely been in the game as well yeah could be a second hit it with all the control in the world still it just finds its way back again well it is Erksy. massive save here from Brown and Flocox just hanging in this game there is so much pressure on him yeah in possession find its way back Chance to break away now. Thierry over the top. This could be a chance for Flocox. That's now too much in this game. Was a shot on there or was it a good idea to pass it? 
I, w I would have shot from there, honestly. I don't think he backed Xerxes. I think that's the big thing. If that's Pulit going through, if that's Henri going through, even Ronaldinho, you might take the shot on, but I just don't think he had the confidence in Xerxes to have it. Referee. And uh, there's links it in deep. <laughs> and that should do us for oh. half time. There oh. we go. I would love to see the stats. I don't think we'll get to see them because of how quickly these players will jump through the menus. But did Flocox have a single shot? I think he didn't. I think he might have touched the box once. Possession as well has got to be at least probably 60, 65 percent because. Yeah, he had the chance. Really? He had the chance to shoot, but he didn't take it. Well then, changes being made. Yeah. Conversations has been have been made also on Leicester's side. Let's see what happens in the second half. How soft do you think it is for a player like Kakova that? in the nicest way, sits out in this grand final, but still sits next to his teammate. <laughs> because at the end of the day, he's not going to be the player that gets the Champions yeah. League ticket, is he? I, I, I think it's... It's tough. It's it's really tough, but it shows how the the team spirit is so important as well. Because in the end, as I said previously to Richard, maybe it's one who may win, but it's the team that celebrates in the end, all together. Well, they're looking for that second steal. Mm. Want it back again. Should be a gift for on nine. Went the wrong way. So, Slowcock's been very aggressive with the goalkeeper movement. I think he expected him to move. Cosimo is pressing now like a, like a demon. Like he's losing. Yeah. He feels like he's sort of got him in this trap, doesn't he? Like a Venus fly trap. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> I don't think that makes that noise, but <laughs> I get the idea. You ever been near one? <laughs> I had one once as a kid. Most boring plant I've ever had. <laughs> All the action happened when I was asleep. Gorilla. Flocox desperate for a way back! about that then? Well, He's got a sniffer out of this game. Forget even time in the green as well. Hold it right place, right time. Finesse top corner. He's back in it. His play style here made the difference. But it loves a left-footed finesse from there. He's not even been in the game. Yeah. And out of nowhere, Rude Hulley fires him back into this match. I mean, you can see the Italian stream yeah. as well. What are they saying in that chat now? When uh, when Flogox is playing, usually his haters also always came up. So now his fans are, are cheering him and uh, are trying to back uh, back for for him. Also, if of course he, he can't see him. Meanwhile, in our chat, Bruno, Empoli versus Juve? Question mark. <laughs> I think this is the question of the day. Bruno, it's been a god, mate. Juventus with the win. Alexandro with a plus two. This is basically oh wow. I think I think the more unsung hero is is it hand in the chat who's just updating every time the uh, question comes yeah. in. Juve won. Juve won but the game. They did win the game. Alexandro got the upgrade. I, I think this is basically what also me as a as a daily streamer have to deal with every day. Like why servers are not uh, working like yesterday? Uh, when fantasy players are upgraded, uh, guys, I don't know. Please, Come, what camera do you play on? Leave me alone. Oh, for that, there's exclamation mark <laughs> camera, guys. <laughs> Can I have a squad review? Thank you, Nightbot, for <laughs> helping me. Did you team reviews? <laughs> a lot, <laughs> a lot. Long ball forward goes back to the goal in the end. <laughs> Five thousand channel points for a team <laughs> review. <laughs> Oh, uh, we have fun. Remember, this is our last round today. And then we're back tomorrow to do it all over again. In the chat, you can click the bracket as well to find out.
what this game will do. The winner will be playing against AC Monza and Hezers. In the bottom half of the bracket tomorrow. I tell you what, Flow Pox. Aubrey had a better touch there. He was just, just you know, take a 2 1 win out of this. Oh. And that's Cosimo's got a different idea here. Teo Hernandez is he round the corner of the Russian defender. Big switch of play. He's possessed again. Big chance. Look at this. It's a potential three on two. Slowed it down a bit too much. What a ball. Is he on? He was. I said I fancy extra time. You wouldn't have expected though, would you, of watching this? Actually reminded me a little bit of the first half of the E Premier League Grand Final. Between Man City and Brighton. Matias and uh Mark Marley. Yeah. Where it was just one way traffic, but just couldn't get a second goal. Yeah. And, and whenever you're in a game that's one nil, your opponent will always get a chance. Yeah, but but Matty had like <laughs> four yeah. open goals, it was crazy to to see. And also in the in the nineties, that Henri shot was so stupid. Why he didn't shoot powerfully? So many ifs and buts in that. There's only certain Crazy grand final. Yeah. <laughs> but I've certainly got oh. hiccups. <laughs> Another 20 minutes. You have to drink a little bit of water without breathing. Try. Which is currently holding his breath. This <laughs> doesn't got to air it. Looking for a way to get back in front. It's a clever little flick on. Finds R9. He goes one-on-one with a defender. Tries to take him on. Nice defense here in, the, in this 1-1 one -one situation. And what is the technique there? Just stand off? Or just wait for the time in the tackle to press that circle? In, in that situation, I think you have to wait, but then you have to press because, uh, as you surely know, uh, if you stick with the alt too, it's not that good uh, this year. Well, Cox. Looking to snatch this win against them on a play, you could argue. He's got a lot of bodies up the pitch here. That's a big win from Vinic. If he doesn't win that, I think there's a counter-attack on. I just said that, and Vinic has given the ball away again. One ball forward. Around with pace now. Come on, step overs, moves from side to side again. Defensively, he's got better flow Cox. He's thrown into this game as long as it took him. You're right in saying that, Richard. You could have all the chance in the world. You get one goal, the game just flips on its head. Lukaku comes on the pitch now to try and Implement those fresh legs. Overlap could be available if he wants to try and find Ronaldinho. He's got to try and get past the unchasing Vinic, though. Whips it across in the air. Oh, hull it. From a gullet to another. And this is why you play him there. But it was perfectly built from, from Cosimo there. You just you float it up at the back post and you say to Hullick, go and win me the game. Go on, get me a goal. Actually thought he overplayed it. Out wide. With Ronaldinho, but just the composure to reassess it. Mm, yeah. See what else he's on. And really hold it at the right place at the right time. Yeah, those crosses with uh, Al Wan are deadly when you have such such a powerhouse in terms of headers. It's, I think it's also because he was moving in motion mm -hmm. if he was just stood up to it yeah. he probably doesn't win it but because he was moving forward towards the goal yeah like a the, the third step in uh, yeah. in basket imagine lebron coming there and making a big smash
into the net. <laughs> Josh shaking his head. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm just trying to understand. I'm just understanding the theory here. <laughs> He's in motion. You're right, that was a slam dunk. Yeah. It was a slam dunk yeah. for Rudhulet. Is that going to be the goal, though? And sends him through to play against Hezzers tomorrow. Or is Flocop going to give us one more big chance? We will get another chance. What are they saying now in the Italian chat? It's like... Uh... <laughs> Civil war between fans, haters, randomly, supporters. Chance. Xerxes. Need to interchange again and again. Xerxes, nice step over exit, wins Ooh. a corner. It's a miracle here from Bang. Watch out for the car crew, maybe his custom movement or Xerxes. Towards the edge of the box to peel off. And easy pickings. It was good goalkeeper movement. We talked about it a lot today. Yeah. Pulled him into the right area, so if it was going to be a cross into the near post, you always back your goalkeeper to get it. I didn't know there was quite a lot of space towards the back of the box. Maybe if you try something different. But with only five minutes left to play, you want to do the path of, path of less resistance, shall we say. If he wins the header at the near post, it's almost a guaranteed goal. He's keeping possession away again there, carelessly. He's doing that, he's given. Lococ another chance to get one back. Oh, that touch from Hullet. Pinged off his boot. Be an outlet on the right back if he wants to go. He's on the opposite side instead. One or two minutes added now of extra time. Two. Two. Yeah. Doesn't need to score again, really. Look after possession. All we got fortunate with that one. And this will be it. Last couple of minutes in game seconds from 14 teams in Italy. There's only eight now that remain. Four of them will be going to the Champions League, which will be confirmed tomorrow. And two of those players and squads will be going for the FC Pro World Championship. More to come tomorrow. Because of Oguaneri, he might be getting on a little bit in age, but he's still he still got it. He's still there, isn't he? Yeah. Massive performance here, also the, the calm and the composure to manage the ball in the last minutes without any risk. Nice. A superb finish as well to the day. I mean, we started with quite a, a cagey affair with Antonini, Gabriel and Hezzers. We've had huge goal swings throughout the day, but ending with a 2-1 in which a game could have gone either way right up to the very end. Seems quite fitting. Yeah, it really does. I mean, look, we've had some crazy performances, but on paper, most of the favourites have come through, haven't yeah. they, Matteo? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just the the two matches that we, we were mentioning before, so Virgil versus uh, um, Darkly. Darkly, yes, and uh, Oli versus Fabio. But uh, I think all the favourites. Other than that, were, yeah, they came through. Yeah, Obron yeah, yeah. looked really convincing. Danny Pippel, we didn't quite see him maybe at the at the top of his game. He's a he's a finals player. He's very similar to Oli Bolly. I mean, they're going to go off tomorrow in that quarter final, which he has to play a, the best. Could be a great. Could be the best. Yeah. Yeah. That game, if one of those two play as they did today, I think they lose. Because the, the other one is going to be right up there. Before we uh, head over to this interview, I want to thank everyone as well in the chat who's been joining us today. It's given us a lot of entertainment. Uh, it's been a lot of good fun. And uh, we'll be doing the exact same tomorrow. They are just getting ready for this final interview of the day. and uh, It's up on me. It is. Um we're going to wait for it and then we'll pass all the reins over to you to guide us through what Cosimo Guanieri is thinking and how he is feeling going into tomorrow's games. Someone said Rivera's better than Brandon. Uh, I agree. No, no, no. I agree.
No, I, and I, I this, agree. This guy is uh, is a VIP from my chat, and uh, <laughs> it, there are lots of respect from you both no, because no, no. we do we do a lots of watch parties. Oh, that's very you kind know, of you. so uh, you both are uh, <laughs> common face for for my community. Boots the stream, commentates himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it's been great to have you. What a show. story! Huh? Great English. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you for us on the Italian broadcast, yeah. we wouldn't we wouldn't be standing. I don't think. Uh, you'll be right. back tomorrow as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll be I'll be with you guys. We're just getting ready for this interview. I believe it is right around the corner. Uh, Matteo, take it away. First of all, he's saying that when one of the two casters that were actually commentating is on the casting desk, I never lose. And that's what happened. Wait, <laughs> Ciao Trimone. Trimone, va bene così. Tornando alla partita, hanno un sacco di domande da farti, te ne faccio una veloce. Ti eri prefissato già un obiettivo minimo in questa competizione? L'hai già superato, non l'hai ancora superato? Svelaci un po' le tue carte. Eh, con il tempo ho imparato a vivere partita dopo partita, centimetro dopo centimetro, quindi ormai <laughs> non vedo più in lungo, ma penso al presente. Lisa said, uh, okay. did you set before this game any Ragazzi, minimum eh, obje objective for uh, your tournament? And he said no, because... I want to leave these final stages game after game. Are they asking questions from there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Well, that's the end of the interview then. Well, that's a quick interview. Sabino said um, you were in the zone, especially in the first half, and uh, I think that you won the game in defense and uh, you knew the moment in which you had to suffer into the game because Flocox were actually attacking. And uh, he replied, uh, yes, for sure, but uh, defensively, uh, I have always been so so strong at that uh, one versus one situation with Blanc in the end helped me so much to achieve the result. Flavio asked, uh, I saw an evolution uh, fro from you because usually you doesn't like to play meta, but now you are playing a little bit of crosses. In fact, you scored with, uh, with an header and uh, Cosimo said, yes, of course, I had to adapt because uh, you in the first half of the regular season, I was doing really bad. But now I feel uh, more comfortable with the mechanics and uh, with the meta. I lost it because I was speaking, but it was mainly the same. Speaking about the gameplay, also the the last one. And that's it. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Big interview. Big interview. Uh, great to hear Cosimo, knowing what we know about him as well. That we realised he was much better in the first half and struggled more in the second half, and the self-realisation. Yeah as well to be able to see what is happening and there is the bracket for tomorrow it's gonna to be Fiorentina to our understanding versus Udinese mm -hmm. in that first match of the day Juventus Desire versus Genoa my eyes are right on that game and the game below it as well Luco versus Obrin Torino versus Verona in the final game Cagliari versus Monza. The, the crazy thing about that game is I think it's the first time ever really in FC Pro history we've seen. Every game is going to mean so much. Yep. You win that first game, E yeah. Champions League. You win the second game, FC Pro World Championship. You win the third game, Champion of Italy. Yeah, it, it will be crazy. The, the games tomorrow will be so tense and also we have some crazy matchups as uh, Richard said. This will be the last time we get to chat to you before the action starts tomorrow. So I'm going to ask you, Matteo, who wins? Ah, tough question. You can't, you can't answer that, I think. No, I, I, I can. Who's, who's the final? 
I can. Uh, I I made a prediction, and for me, the final was Juve versus Verona. Danny Pitbull against Oberon in this yeah. year's grand final. Both players will be off to the uh, FC Pro World Championships, and I mean, we could only pray for that, Richard. That would be uh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? If we could see those players in the grand final. Yeah. I, I think Edzard is making the the choice yeah, we spoiled of feature. Before. Yeah, we might have spoiled that. Yeah, because yeah. we, we know the answer. Yeah, but let let, let me see what is. <laughs> He's such a funny guy. He, he said, uh, "Unfortunately, I have two choice because tomorrow, if I lose, <laughs> I would like a full, but I'm going bottom." <laughs> So he will play he will play Cosimo tomorrow. Lo diciamo? Cioè lo dici tu. Vai. Parte bassa, parte basso scelto. Parte bassa. Come mai? Come mai? Why? Il presente di Cosimo, come ho detto, non lo sapevo, ho detto voglio essere il suo presente. No, ma He said uh, I I want to face Cosimo like in a, in an old fashioned match because they used to play a lot in FIFA 21 if you remember also during the online FGS What's Hezus like as well? It seems like he's got one of the most interesting characters in the Italian scene. Yeah, it is so fun, it's so fun. We we have a WhatsApp group and uh, we we spend also a lot of time together on on Discord and it's so fun. It's such a good guy. Uh, he just said when we usually play, we used to play in FIFA 21. He was so good, and uh, I was so good as well. But uh, Cosimo was one uh, of the strongest opponent for me because I uh, I really feel hard to uh, overcome his defensive play style. But uh, it will be an interesting match between two two good friends. <laughs> it seems like he's going through all the games now. <laughs> now, now, now it's speaking with Cosimo that it's in the crowd. There we have it. The choice has been made. Yeah. The bracket <laughs> is now confirmed. So, as we said, Udinese take on Florentina. First game of tomorrow we are imagining at the bottom half of the bracket. Cosimo Guarneri, Jesus, it will be... We'll see in our last match here. One of those two players will be making e Champions League. That's pretty much just done for the playoffs, Rich, isn't it? For day one. It certainly is. We'll be back tomorrow for the final eight, rounding out into the semi finals and our grand final. Um, we are just going to hold on a second. Maybe. Rap battle number two. No, no, maybe <laughs> just like. Last round of questions. Non ti giri indietro, ma provi a superarlo. Sì, noi abbiamo fatto anche ragionando una scelta proprio di testa. Pensate. Yeah, don't worry, uh, I'll be back to you. Yes, basically, they are now trying to uh, interact with, with others. And uh, Sabino said, uh, you made um, a strong choice because now you are into the, the side of the bracket where the favorites made the most convincing wins because both Lucone and Obrun were the, the most convincing uh, instead of Dani that wins with one just one goal of, of margin. Big congrats for, uh, for Edzers, big congrats for Cosimo, just one last thoughts. We should spoke Italian. I feel so <laughs> useless. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he asked what you you think of uh, all the opponents that you may face tomorrow. He's, point, he's pointing him out at the crowd now. He's speaking. So he's keeping uh, <laughs> the 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 chat with the with the crowd. Now he's saying something to to open. Go away. Go away. He said in the in the final eight, for me, there are the eight best players. So it doesn't matter much whatever I face. If I want to reach the the World Cup, be, I have to be the best. yeah, I have to be the best. And that's it. Big congrats. There you go. Once again.
Hezus, the man of the moment right now. And that is what the bracket does look like. We gave you a teaser before, but they have it in um, all its glory. Udinese versus Fiorentina. Juventus Desire versus Genoa Esports. Torino FC taking on Verona Exceed and rounding it out. Agliari versus Monza. Monza, obviously, with Hezers. We've not seen him since 3 p.m. this afternoon. Yeah. And currently, it's what? 8.30 local time, I think? 19.40. Uh, yeah, 7.30 local time. So, there's so much um, FC left to play. No one's won a thing yet. But in one game time, as you go into the semi-finals, you'll be taking home a guaranteed E-Champions League qualification spot. You win that game, you go into the FC Pro World Championships. Final thoughts for today. Uh, Matteo, what a day it's been. An amazing day, and I think tomorrow will be even better. Brandon, are you ready for tomorrow? It's going to be big. It will be. It starts at, what, half 9 a.m.? We've got a tour, haven't we, around <laughs> the local town? Um, great day here at the East Serie A. Look, 14 down to our final weight. Tomorrow is going to be big. E-Champions League tickets. World Championship spots on the line as well. Cannot wait for it. Look forward for everyone at home to be joining us live tomorrow. Same place, same time. And we'll be interacting with each and every single one of you in the chats. But until then, have a great evening. We'll be back tomorrow for the finals of the E-Serie A. Bye.